All praises to the most high God. Again, tonight's topic is called the Persian Empire. Let's open up with the book of Daniel 8 verse 1. Let's start there. Daniel chapter 8 verse 1. Come on. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel. After that, which appeared unto me at the first. So now this is our forefather, Daniel. The Lord is revealing a vision unto him. The same, the same in account to the visions that he revealed unto him aforetime. That's why he says, after that which appeared unto me at the first. Because the Lord was revealing a lot of visions to Daniel about different empires that will rise and those that will fall. Okay, read. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass, when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace. Come on. Which is in the province of Elam. Mm -hmm. And I saw in a vision and I was by the river Ulai. So now the Lord is revealing visions unto Daniel because the most High God, he spoke to our forefathers, the prophets in visions and dreams. Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea 12 and 10. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. This is how the Lord spoke unto us. Okay. In visions and in dreams. Watch this. Daniel chapter, I mean, Hosea 12 verse 10. Read that. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. Come on. I have also spoken by the prophets. I have spoken by the I have, I have also spoken by the prophets. I have also spoken by the prophets. So our forefather Daniel was a mighty prophet. Okay, come on. And I have multiplied visions. I have what? I have done what? And I have multiplied visions. I have multiplied visions. So the Lord gave our forefathers multiple visions concerning the things that have not happened yet. Go ahead. And use similitudes mm -hmm. by the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophets. And he used similitudes in those visions by the ministry of the prophets. Similitudes. Okay. Meaning illustrated stories in those visions that he gave to our forefathers. Now give me the book of Numbers 12 verse 6. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6. Numbers chapter 12 verse 6. Come on. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you. Mm -hmm. If there be Lord, a what? Hold on. If there be a what? If there be a prophet among you. If there be a prophet among you. So he's saying the same thing that we just read in Hosea. If there be a prophet among you. Go ahead. I, the Lord, will make myself known to, unto him in a vision. In a what? In a vision. In a vision, like he says in Hosea, come on. And will speak unto him in a dream. And I will speak unto him in a dream. Watch this. Give me the book of Job 33 verse 14. Job chapter 33 verse 14. The most said God, he spoke unto us in multiple ways aforetime. You understand? Watch this. Job chapter 33 verse 14. Read that. Job chapter 3 verse 14. For God speaketh once, mm -hmm. yea, twice, yet a man perceiveth not. Yet man perceiveth it not. He says, God, for God speaketh once, yea, twice. So what is our forefather Job teaching us here? The, our forefather Job is teaching us that the most high God, I mean, he's the, he's the almighty. So he may get your attention, he may try to get your attention once. You understand? And maybe the second time. Then after that, you're done. The Lord don't deal with you no more. You understand? So that's heavy right there. Okay, read again verse 14. Come on. Job chapter 32, verse 14. Come on. For God speaketh once, mm -hmm. yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Yet man perceiveth it not. Because remember, how many times did he, spoke, did he speak to King Solomon? He only spoke to him twice. You understand? Read the next verse. Come on. In a dream. In a what? In a vision of the night. In a dream. Mm-hmm. In a vision of the night. Is there some delay, some kind of? Yes, sir. 
Okay, could you drop off and come back in? All right. Drop yes, off sir. and come back in, yeah. Drop off and come back in. I cannot afford delays on this one. All right. Bear with us, brothers and sisters. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Job 33, read verse 14 again. Job chapter 33, verse 14. Read. For God speaketh once, mm -hmm. yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. The Lord speaketh once or, and twice, yea, man does not perceive it. Go ahead. In a dream, mm -hmm. in a vision of the night. Read. When deep sleep falleth upon men. In slumberings upon the bed. In slumberings upon the bed. So it says, in a dream, eh, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed. So the Most High God, he will speak to us like that. He won't speak to us directly like that. You understand? He's the Almighty, he's the Almighty God. He's got too much, he's got, he's got things to do. You understand? That's why he speaks to us like this. Go ahead. Verse 16. Read. Verse 16, mm. then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth the instruction. You see that thing? Then he openeth the ears of men, meaning their minds, their spiritual ears, and sealeth their instruction. The Lord will seal his instruction in your spirit, you understand, so that you do his will. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 20, okay? Give me Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Read that. Proverbs 20, verse 24. Come on. Man's goings are of the Lord. Uh -huh. How can a man then understand his own way? You see that thing? Man's goings are of the Lord because the Lord will seal his instruction in your spirit in the slumbering upon the bed. When you are in deep sleep, the Lord will do that thing. You understand? That's why it says, how can then man understand his own way? You cannot. You cannot understand your own way. Why? Because the most High is in control of your, of your life. If you keep God's commandments, if you don't, Satan is, in your, is at your right hand. Watch this. Give me the book of uh, Psalms. Give me Psalms 37 real quick. Psalms chapter 37. Okay. Psalms, Psalms chapter 37 verse 23. Read what you got. Psalms 37 verse 23. Read. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Read. And he delighteth in his way. You see that thing? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So if you are a good man, what makes this man to be good? Give me that in Luke chapter 8 real quick. Hmm. Luke 8. Okay. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. Read that. This is what Christ said about a good man or a good woman. What, read what you got. Come on. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. Read. But that's on the good ground are they. Mm -hmm. Which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. You see what he's saying? It says, but that on the good ground are they. The good ground is the what? There's commandments. You understand? Found Christ being the foundation. In an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. They hear the word. How did they hear the word? In deep sleep, in slumbering upon the, uh, uh, slumbering upon the bed. Guess what the Lord does? He sealed their instruction. You understand? That's what the Lord does. Okay, so go back to Psalms 37, verse 23 again. Read that. Psalms 37, verse 23. Read. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he delighteth in his way. Because that man will delight in the way of the Most High God, which is his commandments. You understand? And therefore, the Lord will reveal deep things unto that man or that sister. Watch this. Go back to Daniel now. Okay, Daniel chapter 8. 
Daniel chapter 8 and verse Daniel 8 verse 2 again. Daniel chapter 8 verse 2. Read. And I saw in a vision, and mm -hmm. it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. Mm -hmm. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Ulai. So now this right here, where, where Daniel is seeing a vision, and where is he at in this vision? In the, in the, in the province of Elam. This is Persia. You understand? Persia, India. Okay. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And the higher came up last. So now in this vision, Daniel is seeing a ram. You understand? It says a ram stood before him. This ram had two horns. You understand? And one horn was higher than the other horn. Go ahead. I saw the ram pushing westward mm -hmm. and northward and Red. southward. Come on. So that, so that no beast could stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. So now this ram was conquering. You understand? The ram was pushing westward. The ram, the ram pushed northward. It pushed southward. It says what? There was, no, there was nobody that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Nobody could be delivered from the hand of the ram because this kingdom was powerful. You understand? It says what? It says, but he did according to his will and became great. So this great, this great horn is the one that is higher than the other horn on the ram. Watch this. Jump down to verse 15 now. Remember, Daniel is seeing this vision. You understand? But he does not understand. He does not know what it means yet. Because understanding has not been given unto him of what this vision means. Read verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. Read. And it came to pass when mm. I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Read that again, verse 15. Daniel chapter 8, verse 15. Go ahead. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen, in the, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. So now Daniel is saying, listen. It says, and it came to pass, even I, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision. Daniel is seeing the vision now. You understand? Now he's searching for the meaning of what does this vision mean? Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Now Daniel is seeing the appearance of a man in this vision. You understand? While he was searching for what the vision means. Go ahead. And I heard a man's voice. Between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So now he's hearing a voice. He says, I, he says, I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli. That's the river Uli that we read in Daniel chapter 8 and verse 2. You understand? Go ahead. Now, this man, he says, said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. Who is Gabriel? The angel. This is Gabriel, the angel. So there's a voice that is say that the voice that Daniel is hearing telling this man whose name is Gabriel to say, to tell him listen make this man understand this vision go ahead So he came near so he came near where I stood mm -hmm. and when he came I was afraid and fell upon my face but he said unto me understand O son of man mm -hmm. for at the time of the end shall be the vision he says, at the time of the end shall be the vision. So he's going to explain what the vision means because this vision is going to explain the end times. He's going to, he's going to explain part of the events that must happen to signify the end times. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep 
on my face toward the ground. What did he say? I was in a what? I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. That's what we read in Job 33. You understand? He says, I was in a deep sleep. Go ahead. But he touched me and set me upright. Read. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. What did he say? Stop right there. Read that part again. Daniel chapter 8 verse 19. Go ahead. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. You see what he's saying? He says, he says, listen what he's saying. He says, I will make thee to know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. He's going to explain to me what this indignation is. He says, I'm going to make you to know what will be in the last end of the indignation. The last end, the last end of the indignation. Go ahead. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Because at the time appointed of this indignation, the end shall be. Now we need to understand what is this indignation that the angel is talking about? Give me the book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 12. Okay, Zechariah 1 verse 12. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 12. Go ahead. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the cities of Judah? Come on. Against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years. Read that again. Read that again, verse 12. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem? And on the cities of Judah, mm -hmm. against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years. He says he has what? Has had indignation these three score and ten years. Indignation these three score and ten years. What is three score? Three score is 60 and then 10. So that's 70 years of indignation, right? 70 years of indignation. Go back to Daniel. We're coming back here. Daniel. Okay. Daniel chapter 8 verse 19. Daniel chapter 8 verse 19. Read. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. Come on. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. So now this indignation will mark the end of that time that Daniel is being shown the vision of what we just read of the ram that has two horns. You understand? Go back to Zechariah now. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 12 again. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 12. Come on. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, mm -hmm. O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years? So now he says, how long are we, uh, he says, how long will thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah? He says, being specific, on the cities of Judah, which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years. Because the Lord had in, put indignation on the cities of Judah for what? For a punishment that will last for three score and ten years, 70 years. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 25 verse 11. We're going to go into this indignation that Daniel is explaining here. That the angel is explaining to Daniel. You understand? Jeremiah 25 verse 11. Jeremiah 25 verse 11. Come on. Who land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. They shall what? Read that again verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11. Mm -hmm. And this whole land shall be a desolation. The whole land of Judah. The whole land of Judah. Remember, Zechariah is talking about the cities of Judah. That shall be a desolation. You understand? That's the indignation that will be upon Jerusalem. Go ahead. And an astonishment. Mm -hmm. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. So the indignation that the Lord brought upon Jerusalem was by whose hand? 
the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And that indignation will go for how long? Three score and ten years. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Keep going. Verse 12. Come on. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished. When the 70 years I... is done, when the 70 years is accomplished, meaning what? The indignation is over. Read. That I will punish the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and I will make it perpetual desolations. So the Lord now is using Jeremiah to prophesy what will happen after the indignation of three score and ten years. What will the Lord do? He says, I'm going to punish the king of Babylon. Now, we're going to go into that, how the Lord will punish the king of Babylon. But we need to deal with Babylon just for a second. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles, okay? Give me Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 5. Second Chronicles, we're still explaining the indignation, okay, that Daniel prophesied, you understand, that the angel is now making, is explaining to Daniel what this means. Watch this, Second Chronicles 36 verse 5, come on. Second Chronicles chapter 36 verse 5. Read. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, mm -hmm. and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. So, so Jakim was 20, 25 years old when he began to reign. He, and he, what he says, he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Because at this point, Northern Kingdom was taken by the Assyrians. So Judah is the one that the Lord now is bringing indignation against during the, when these kings was ruling. You understand? Go ahead. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, King mm -hmm. of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. So now watch this. So the Lord sent against Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, you understand, to start to bring indignation upon these kings that was rebellious. Read. Nebuchadnezzar also carried the carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon mm -hmm. and put them in his temple at Babylon. You see what happens when, they, when, when these nations would conquer us? They would take our possessions too. Look what Nebuchadnezzar is doing. He's carrying the vessels that was found in the temple because we was rich. We was wealthy. You understand? Now, not only are they putting us in chains and dragging us into their land, but they are also spoiling our goods too. You understand? Read. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him, Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Mm -hmm. And Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, this is Jachin. Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin. It says, Jachin, his son, reigned in his stead. Remember now, Jachin is taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Jachin, his son, is ruling now. Go ahead. Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. So, so what you are seeing here, these are evil kings that are being what? That are being, dis that are being punished, you understand? Because they were not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. And they have to fulfill prophecy that we read in Daniel. Go ahead. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the, gold, with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord mm -hmm. and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. So now what has happened is Nebuchadnezzar said, okay, now they, he also, after a year, because remember it says what he ran three months and ten days. Now a year later he was taken into Babylon and guess what? It says Zedekiah his brother king, he made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah is the brother, not to Jachin, but to Jachim. So he's the uncle. So Zedekiah is the uncle of Jachin. Okay, go ahead. Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Read. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. 
So now you see, he didn't humble himself down because the Lord, he raised up who? He raised up the prophets during that time to do what? To teach the kings and to warn them of that Nebuchadnezzar is coming. He's going to destroy you. They didn't want to listen to the prophets. Likewise, so it is today. It's the same thing today. You know, our so-called politicians, our the pastors and so forth, you understand? The CEOs, they don't want to hear nothing this Bible has to say. You understand? Because they don't believe the Bible because they are too comfortable in oppression. Okay, read. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. who made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. You see, what he rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, despite what Jeremiah had said at the mouth of the Lord. Read. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and, all, and the people transgress very much after all the abominations of the heathen mm -hmm. and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had allowed in, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. So you see what they was doing is as moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. So what were they doing? Idol worship. You understand? They were keeping their customs. You understand? Sacrificing unto their idols and so forth. That's what they were doing. That's what our people are doing today. You understand? They are celebrating Christmas. And by the way, Christmas is coming. Our people, they are going to spend all their money that they got to sacrifice unto Tammuz. Go ahead. Moreover, verse 15, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So who are these messengers? That's the prophets. The Lord sent the prophets, it says, rising betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people. Guess what? Look at it today. When we go out to the streets to teach our people, is is because that's the compassion of the Lord upon our people, but our people don't see that. Because when the scriptures come out, they take it personal. You understand? They see it as a personal attack. It is a personal attack on them. Why? Because that's what the Lord is doing. The Lord is going to personally attack you. Because what is that taking personal? He's attacking your personal life and your way you conduct yourself. The Lord said, I'm going to use the prophets to do that thing. Yes, and you are going to take it personal. Because it is personal. Read again. Second Corinthians. Second Chronicles, chapter 36, verse 15. Go ahead. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messages, mm -hmm. rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. You see that thing? He had compassion on our people. So that's the same thing today. Go ahead. But they mocked the messages of God. What did they do? But they mocked the, the messengers of God. They mocked the messengers of God. I'll give an example. When we go to Macedon, okay, we go and teach. As soon as we arrive in battle array, what do those wicked Negroes say? But no, we are loyal. But, but if I are loyal, but here come the witches. I guess that's what they say. They're making mockery of the prophets of the Lord. That is what you are seeing right here. You understand? They don't see that us being on the street teaching them in the spirit of Christ, that's the Lord's compassion on them. They don't see it like that because our people have been raised up in condition to be emotional and being into their feelings. You understand? Read. And despised his words mm -hmm. and misused his prophets. They misused the prophets. And they throw stones at us. Read. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. Uh -huh. Till there was no remedy. So when our, when our people reject this Bible and they be cursing us out and all of that, guess what? They are just, listen, they are just creating problems for their own selves in their own lives. Because you see what he's saying here? It says, until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, till there was no remedy. Meaning what? At that point, the Lord is not going to send the prophet. Mm -mm. The Lord wants to bring forth judgment now. You understand? Because the prophets, they came, they, nobody wants to hear them. They let's okay, step aside. Let me do this thing. You understand? Read. Therefore, he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, mm -hmm. who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. 
and had no compassion upon and had no compassion upon young man or maiden come on old man or mm. him that stooped for age go ahead he gave them all into his hand you see what the lord allowed allowed to happen in the cities of judah he allowed the young man to be put to death you understand he had no compassion on the young man the maiden the old man and him that stooped for age he didn't listen he said okay you never wanted to listen that's the same thing today our mothers our grandmothers our aunties our uncles and so forth guess what that's the same thing that will happen to them that's the same thing that's happening to them today because they reject the commandments of the lord and they mock the prophets of the lord you understand so the thing that happened back then you must bring it to today because it's relevant to today still go ahead and all the vessels of the house of god great mm. and small and the treasures and the treasures of the house of the lord the treasures of the king and of his princes all these he brought to babylon you see what he was doing he was spoiling our goods he was taking everything we got you know he was raiding the temple because there were precious things in the temple okay because we were rich remember at this point solomon is dead and gone david is gone and so forth but remember the temple that is still standing is the temple that king solomon built you understand in its magnificence so you can imagine the level of wealth that was sitting in the temple you understand and our forefathers and foremothers they was rich they was wealthy okay we were living large the lord said listen everything is going to be taken okay read and they burnt the house of god mm. and break down the wall of jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof to stop right there so now nebuchadnezzar is bringing forth judgment in jerusalem you understand in the cities of judah because they did not want to hearken to what jeremiah the prophet was prophesying about the destruction and the judgment that's coming they didn't want to hear that watch this give me first ezra 1 verse 33 first ezra chapter 1 verse 33 okay First Ezra chapter one verse three, read. These things are written in the book of the stories of the kings of Judah, mm -hmm. and every one of the acts that Josiah did, and his glory, and in the, and his understanding in the law of the Lord, and the things that he had done before, and the things now recited, are reported in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, and Judea. So now remember now because we I didn't read that give me that in go back to second chronicles we coming back here second chronicles chapter 36 verse 1 we're going to read 1 through 4 you understand so that we can understand this is after Josiah died you understand so Jakim became the he was he sat on the throne you understand so read that second chronicles 36 and 1 we're going to read down second chronicles chapter 36 verse 1 mm -hmm. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made Wait. him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Come on. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Come on. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem, and condemned the land in an hundred talents of silver and a talents of gold. So now Nebuchadnezzar the king of Egypt that's Pharaoh Necho. Pharaoh Necho is the one that killed his father Josiah because Josiah King Josiah he interfered in the business that had nothing to do with him and he guess what he was wounded and he died. Go ahead. So now Pharaoh Necho is imposing tax on the land. Read. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. and turned his name to joy king mm -hmm. and nico took jehoahaz his brother and carried him to egypt you see that thing so now eliakim was jehoahaz's brother whose name was changed to jakim you understand never can never change his name so it's nothing new because they are following the they are following the footsteps of the previous slave masters that had us in captivity like in like in egypt the assyrians and so forth they be changing our names and our nationality guess what 
Pharaoh is doing the same thing here. Okay, read. Is that it on that? Okay, go back. First Ezra chapter 1 verse 33. First Ezra chapter 1 verse 33. Read. These things are written in the book of the stories of the kings of Judah. Mm -hmm. And everyone, and every one of the acts that Josiah did, and his glory, and his understanding in the law of the Lord. Read. And the things that he had done before, and the things now recited are reported in the books of the kings of Israel and Judea. Read. And the people took Joachaz, the son of Josias. So Joachaz is Joachaz. Joachaz is Joachaz. Go ahead. And made him king instead of Josias, his father. Mm -hmm. When he was 20 and three years old. Read. And he reigned in Judea and in Jerusalem three months. And then the king of Egypt disposed him from reigning in Jerusalem. Deposed him from reigning, he meaning he dethroned him. He was dethroned by Pharaoh Nico. Go ahead. And the king and the king of Egypt deposed him from reigning in Jerusalem. Come on. And he set a tax upon the land of, of an hundred talents of silver and one talent of gold. You see that thing? That's what we just read in Second Chronicles. You understand? So he he put he set tax upon the land. Okay, read. And he bound Joachim no, no. and the nobles. No, verse 37. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. The king of Egypt also made King Joachim his brother, king of Judea and Jerusalem. You see what it, that's what we're reading the same account. You understand? It says the king of Egypt also made uh, King Joachim, that's Joachim, his brother, king of Judea and, and, and one, Jerusalem. Remember his name was what? Eliakim. Who Pharaoh Nico changed to Jakim. Go ahead. Verse 38. And he bound Joachim and the nobles. But Zachary, but Zerachis, his brother. Zerasis. Zerasis, come on. But Zerasis, his brother, he apprehended and mm -hmm. brought him out of Egypt. Come on. Five and twenty years old was Joachim when he was made king in the land of Judea and Jerusalem. And he did evil before the Lord. That wicked Negro right there. Go ahead. Wherefore, against him, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came up and bound him with a chain of brass and mm. carried him unto Babylon. You see what he's saying? And bound him with a chain of brass. So this was a common thing that the nations was doing. Another thing I want to show you is that when we read Deuteronomy 28, you understand, they shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until you have destroyed thee. Guess what? It doesn't only, it not only does it apply, it doesn't only apply to the transatlantic, the sub-Sahara, the Silk Road. No, no, no. It's going into what? All the captivities that we went under. You understand? So don't just only just think of it as these last days. No. Okay, come on. Verse 41. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar also took of the holy vessels of the Lord and carried them away and set them in his own temple at Babylon. Right. But those things which are recorded of him and of his uncleanness and impiety are written in the chronicles of the kings. That's what we just read. Go ahead. And Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead. So now what we're reading here, and it says Joachim, you see, he's not making... They are not separating the names. He's saying Jakim in verse 37 and verse 43 says Jakim. But this Jakim here is Jakim with an N. Okay, come on. And Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead. He was made king being 18 years old. Go ahead. And he reigned but three months and 10 days in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and did evil before the Lord. Read on. And made Zedekiah king of Judea. No, 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 no verse 45, verse 45. Remember, what we read in Second Chronicles, it says, it tells you, it says, three months and 10 years and 10 days, right? Then it says, after a year was expired. Okay, so we want to read about the same account here. Read. Verse 45. Mm -hmm. So after a year, Nebuchadnezzar sent and caused him 
to be brought up, to be brought into Babylon with the holy vessels of the Lord. You see that thing? You see, they don't, they, they never defraud themselves when it comes to robbing us. Okay, read. And made Zedekiah king of Judea and Jerusalem when mm -hmm. he was one and 20 years old and he reigned 11 years. So now this is who? This is Jaquin's uncle. Read. And he did, Come on. and he did, and he did evil also in the sight of the Lord and cared not for the words that was spoken unto him by the prophet Jeremy out of the mouth, from the mouth of the Lord. That's the same account we read. Read on. And after that, King Nebuchadnezzar had made him to swear by the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He foresaw himself and rebelled and hardening his neck and his heart, he transgressed the laws of the Lord God of Israel. Come on. The governors also of the people and of the priests did many things against the laws and passed all the pollutions of all nations mm. and defiled the temple of the Lord, which was sanctified in Jerusalem. You see what he's saying? So now everybody was going the hell off at this point. Ray? Nevertheless, the God of the fathers sent by his messenger to call them back because he spared them and his tabernacle also. Read that again, verse 50. First is the chapter 1 verse 50. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the God of their fathers sends by his messenger to call them back because he spared them and his tabernacle also. You see what he's saying right there? He says, nevertheless, the God of their fathers sent by his messengers to call them back because he spared them and his tabernacle. That's what we read. He says he had compassion on them. You understand? But they make mockery. They made mockery of the prophets. Read. Right? But they had but they had his messengers in derision. Mm -hmm. And look, when the Lord spake unto them, they made a sport of his prophets. They made a sport of his prophets. They mocked the prophets. Right? So far forth that he, being wroth with his people for their great ungodliness, mm -hmm. commanded the kings of the Chaldees to come up against them. He said, Nebuchadnezzar, remember at this point. Who was ruling at this point? Zedekiah is the king. And he says he rebelled and hardened his neck. When the Lord had compassion to send the prophets, they made sport of the prophets. They mocked them. Okay, then the Lord said, okay, I'm going to send the Chaldean, the king of the Chaldeans, Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead. Verse 53. Mm -hmm. Who slew their young men with the sword. Yea, even within the compass of, the, of their holy temple and spared neither their young man nor maid, mm. old man nor child among Ray? them, for he delivered all into their hands. Come on. And they took all the holy vessels of the Lord, both great and small, mm. with the vessels of the ark of God and the king's treasures and carried them away into Babylon. Read. As for the house of the Lord, they burnt it, and break down the walls of Jerusalem and set fire upon her towers. Come on. And as for her glorious things, they never ceased till they had consumed and brought them all to naught. And the people that were not slain with the sword, he carried unto Babylon. So the people that were not put to death by Nebuchadnezzar, he carried them into Babylon. So keep that in mind. The people that were not killed meaning they were spared, they were taken into captivity. Okay, read. Verse 57. Who became servants to him and his children till the Persians reigned. Till the what? Till the Persians reigned. Till the Persians reigned. Till the Persians reigned. So keep that in mind. So remember, we're explaining the indignation in Daniel 8. Don't forget the thought now. Go ahead. To fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremy. To fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken by Jeremiah. Give meaning one. Three score and ten days and, and ten years that we read in Zechariah 1, verse 12. Okay, come on. Until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, the whole time of a desolation shall she rest, 
Until the full term of 70 years. Until the full term of 70 years by the mouth of Jeremiah the prophet. Now watch this. Now go back to Daniel 8 now. Daniel chapter 8, read verse 19. Daniel chapter 8, verse 19. Read. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at that, for at the time appointed, the end shall be. The meaning the end of the indignation shall be. Which part, which indignation? 70 years of slavery in Babylon. That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Read that again. Daniel chapter 8 verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee to know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. Mm. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Meaning the end of the indignation. Which indignation specifically? Babylon. Babylon. 70 years. When 70 years are accomplished, then you'll know that is the end of the indignation. And the Lord will show us what he will do. Watch the next verse. Come on. The ram which thou sowest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Read that again, verse 20. Now he's explaining the vision. Or who is the ram? Who, 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 is, who is the ram? And what does the horn on the ram represent? Read that again, verse 20. Daniel chapter 8, verse 20. Read. The ram which thou sowest, mm -hmm. having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. So the ram's horn represents the kings of Media and Persia. So Media came first, Persia came last. Because Media was the little horn and Persia was the higher horn, which became great. You understand? To take over who? To destroy the kingdom of Babylon. Because it requires two kingdoms to destroy it because it was powerful. Okay? Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles 36 verse 20. Second Chronicles 36 verse 20. Second Chronicles 36 verse 20. Read. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon. Mm -hmm. where, they were, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Read that again, verse 20. Second Chronicles 36, verse 20. Come on. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon. Mm -hmm. where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kings of the kingdom of Persia. Until the indignation be over, that particular indignation, because there were more indignations that were going to come. But at this point in Daniel 8 verse 20, I mean, Daniel 8 verse 19 is talking about a specific indignation that would happen. And once the indignation is over, then the, the Lord will raise up who? The Persians. Okay. Read. Verse 21. Come on. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah. Until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath, mm -hmm. for as long as he lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score in ten years. Now let's deal with that verse right there. It says what? Because we read in First Ezra, we read it in First Ezra one, um, verse First Ezra one, verse fifty-seven and fifty-eight. Now watch this. You see that part there when it says to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. Okay, watch this. Give me Daniel 9 verse 2. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. Watch this. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. Mm -hmm. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the, of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. He would accomplish 70 years. So Daniel knew by the books that was written by Jeremiah. So he was in the prophets too. The prophets that came before him, he studied them. He says he knew by the word of Jeremiah that we, what, the Lord will what? Will put indignation upon us that will last for 70 years. 
You understand? And while those 70 years were going on, the land of Israel will enjoy her Sabbaths. Watch this. Give me Leviticus 26, 43. Leviticus 26, verse 43. Read that. Remember what, 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 what Daniel is saying, okay? And what we just read, what we read also in Chronicles, okay? Moses prophesied about this thing. Watch this. Read that. Leviticus 26, 43. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 43. Come on. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbath mm -hmm. while she lieth desolate without them. Come on. And she and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. You know why he's saying this? Hold on. He says, and they shall accept, they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Because the kings of Judah during the time of Babylon, when during the time when Jeremiah was prophesying against the kings of Judah that Babylon is coming, they did not want to accept what that was coming. They didn't want to accept. That's why they want. They put Jeremiah in the stocks that was punishing him. You understand? Because they didn't want to accept that actually we are going to lose the stuff we've got. They didn't want to accept that. That's why Moses here is saying, and shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. They did not want to accept that. That's why Moses is saying it. So when you read Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28, don't just think of the transatlantic, the sub-Sahara. Mm -mm. It's talking about all the judgments that will come upon us after what? After Moses spoke to us in the wilderness. You understand? Read again, verse 43. Leviticus chapter 8, chapter 26, verse 43. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her service mm -hmm. while she lieth desolate without them. Come on. And they shall accept the, of the punishment of their iniquity. Read. Because, even because they despised my judgment mm -hmm. and because their soul abhorred my statutes. So now, why would the Lord do this? Is because, he's telling us because, even because they despise my statutes, I mean my judgment, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. That's why the Lord said, mm -mm, I gotta kick you out. You understand? Why? Because you don't want to keep my commandments. I want the land to enjoy her service because we were no longer doing that. Because what was the law? Every seven years, we must give the land rest. We didn't do that. You understand? We didn't give the land rest when we were plowing and so forth. We were just doing it despite the, what the law says. Okay? That's what we read, what we read now. Go back to Daniel now. Okay? No, no, go back to Second Chronicles. Okay? Go back to Second Chronicles 36, verse 21. Second Chronicles 36, verse 21. Read. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah mm -hmm. until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. To fulfill 70 years. So he's, you see what we're reading here, there's two prophets that are being quoted, you understand? Jeremiah and Moses. Jeremiah and Moses are being quoted here in this verse. Okay, watch this. Give me the book Give me the book of Isaiah, okay? Give me Isaiah 44, verse 24. Isaiah 44, verse 24. Remember what, what we read in Daniel 8, the angel described to Daniel who the ram represents. He represents the kings of Media and Persia. We understand that now. So now we went there to explain the indignation, you understand? And when the indignation is done at that particular time, as per the vision that was shown to Daniel, then the Lord will raise up the, the kings of Persia. You understand? To, to punish Nebuchadnezzar. Remember what we read in Jeremiah. He says, I'm going to punish the king of Babylon. Okay, so don't forget, the, don't, don't forget the thought. Isaiah 44 verse 24. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer, mm -hmm. and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretches forth the heavens alone, uh -huh. that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So now the Lord is telling us, listen, I'm thy redeemer. He's talking to Jacob. He's talking to our forefathers. You understand? He's talking to us. Jump down to verse 26 now. Watch this. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. 
that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. Read. That saith, that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited. Thou shalt be what? Thou shalt be inhabited. So now the Lord is telling us, uh, listen, you are going to be inhabited. Remember, the judgment came upon us, was still a, is still also tying back to the indignation. But also after the indignation is done, guess what? The Lord is going to what? The Lord is will deliver us. But he's going to tell us how he will do it. Read verse 26 again. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 26. Go ahead. That confirmeth the word of his servant mm -hmm. and performeth the counsel of his messengers. Read. Read to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited. Mm -hmm. And to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built. Mm -hmm. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof. You see what he's saying? It says what it says, and the and it says what and and perform the counsel of his messengers, meaning what the what the prophets had said, like Jeremiah that says to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built. Remember, who was taken into captivity? Judah. Northern Kingdom was already in captivity under the Assyrians at that point. You understand? And also during the time of Babylon, guess what? He was talking about particularly Judah, but guess what? When Nebuchadnezzar would take over, he would bring northern kingdom also under his domain, under his dominion. You understand? So when we were slaves in Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar, northern kingdom was with us. So let me put that out there so that nobody gets confused. Okay? So then it says, I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 29 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 10. Let's read that. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon. At what? I will visit at Babylon. So 70 years must be accomplished at Babylon. Go ahead. I will visit you mm -hmm. and perform my good work my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. You said that's after the indignation is done. Read. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the mm -hmm. Lord. Read. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you, to give you an expected end. That's what the Lord wants for us. You see, because we are too hard-headed. Read that again, verse 11. That's a beautiful verse right there. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 11. Read. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, mm. saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. The Lord says he's going to give us an expected end. What is the expected end? Receiving the kingdom. Back then and now. Go ahead. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. So because the only way the Lord, we will be able to call upon the Lord, that means our temple will be built again. It says, and he shall go and pray unto me. Because we will have, the temple will be standing. You understand? It says, and I will hearken unto you. Because we will perform sacrifices. You understand? And the Levites in their proper order. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that Jeremiah is not mentioning yet. Okay, read. And ye shall seek me and find mm -hmm. me. Come on. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Read. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Mm. Come on. And I will turn away your captivity. Mm. And I will gather you from all the nations and from and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Read. Lord. Come on. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. So the Lord is saying, he's promising us, I'm going to deliver you. That's what he's saying right there. He says, I'm going to deliver you. Don't worry about it. Now watch this. Give me Daniel 11 verse 2. Daniel chapter 11 verse 2 now. Daniel chapter 11 verse 2. Come on. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. How many kings? And the fourth shall be four. Behold, they shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. He says they're going to stand up three kings in Persia. Remember, Persia is coming into power now. 
Okay, they shall stand up three kings in Persia. Read. And the fourth shall be far richer than they all. Mm, the fourth king of Persia, he says, is going to be far richer than they all. Read. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. You see what the Lord is saying right there? He says, this fourth king of Persia, he says, I'm going to raise up three kings of Persia. But this fourth king, he's going to stay up. What he says, what he says, he's going to stay up against all the realms of Grisha. Meaning he's going to stay up the Greeks. So already Daniel is also going into like Greece is coming into power shortly after, after Persia is ruling. Guess what? Who's going to dethrone Persia? The Greeks. But he's going to, he's telling you that the fourth king of the Persians He's the one that is going to stir them up because he's going to be powerful. He's going to be rich, like we read in Daniel 8. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Ezra. Okay? Ezra 6, verse 14. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. Read. And the elders of the Jews builded. And they, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, mm. and Zechariah, the son of Edo. Right. And they built it and finished it according to the commandments of the God of Israel mm -hmm. and according to the commandments of Cyrus and mm. Darius mm. and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. So now these are the three kings of Persia that we just read in Daniel 11. These kings right here. Okay, Cyrus. Darius and Artaxerxes, the kings of Persia. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 44, verse 28. Let's go back there now. Isaiah 44. Now we know what the first king that is going to take the throne of the Persian Empire. Okay, Isaiah 44, verse 28. Come on. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. Read. That saith you know of Cyrus. Wait, start a verse. Read verse 26 again, then we're going to jump. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 76. Come on. That henceforth the word of his... Isaiah chapter 44, verse 76. Come on. That confirmeth the word of his servant mm -hmm. and performeth the counsel of his messengers. Read. That saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, mm -hmm. and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. He says, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. So what are we reading here? The Lord is promising us deliverance, you understand, from captivity out of Babylon. Read verse 28 now. Come on. Hold. Yeah, yeah. Keep reading. Read verse, verse 28. 28. Uh -huh. That saith of Cyrus, mm -hmm. he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Read. Even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. Now stop right there. Stop right there. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that, brothers and sisters. Okay, read verse 28 again for me. Uh, Soldier Haggai, come on. 
Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. Go ahead. That saith of Cyrus, mm -hmm. he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Really? Even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. So now what we're seeing here says, that saith, to, that, that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. Meaning Cyrus is my shepherd, right? And shall perform all my pleasure, even sayings to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. So who's the Lord going to use to build, to rebuild the temple that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar? He's going to use Cyrus to do it. You understand? And we're going to go into the details on how he's going to use Cyrus. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 45 verse 1. Isaiah 45 verse 1. Come on. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1. Read. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, mm -hmm. to Cyrus, whose right hand have, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. Mm -hmm. And I will loose the loins of kings mm. to open before him the two leaved gates, the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. So now the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to use Cyrus. He's anointed. Okay. So he says, as, as, as who, whose right hand I have holden, meaning what? I'm going to strengthen, I'm going to strengthen Cyrus. And because I'm going to strengthen Cyrus, and this is what I'm going to do for him. It says what? It says, it says, I, it says, I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lived gates and the gates shall not be shut. Meaning what? He says he's going to what? He's going to open the economy. He's going to make him great. Okay. That's what he's saying right there. Keep reading. Come on. Verse 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. What did he say? And what? And cut in sunder the bars of iron. So what is he saying? He said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to allow you to conquer kingdoms. You understand? We're going to read about those kingdoms in a second. Remember verse 1 says, he says what? He says, to open before him the two leaved gates and the gates shall not be shut. Then he says, I will go before thee. The Lord is telling Cyrus, I'm going to go before Cyrus and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Meaning what? We gonna, I'm going to use you to destroy all these kingdoms. You understand? Read. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. You Hold on. Stop right there. He says, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness. What is the treasures of darkness? He's talking about meaning what? He's talking about the riches of these other nations that they got through deceit. You understand? Because they don't keep the commandments of the Mosai. That's why he's saying, I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Okay, meaning riches got by deceit. Read. And hidden riches of secret places. Come on. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, mm -hmm. which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. You see what he's saying right there? So he's even giving him the name. Because remember, now pay attention now, because I know some of you might have forgot. The time when Isaiah walked the earth, what time was that? This was during the time of the Assyrians. Understand that. It's during the time of... So Isaiah is prophesying about a king that was not even born yet. Okay? About a king that was not even born yet because after the Assyrians, who took over? Babylon took over. You understand? And after Babylon took over, guess who rose uh, from the realm? Media. It wasn't Persia. So Isaiah is prophesying, you understand, hundreds of years earlier before Cyrus is even born and the Lord is naming him what his name will be. This is some heavy stuff right here. Read again verse 3. Okay. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3. Come on. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness mm -hmm. and, uh, and, hidden and, hidden riches, and hidden riches of secret parts. Come on. And hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, 
am the God of Israel. So now, because I know it, it might have went over some of your heads. You understand what I just explained here? Isaiah. Remember, the Assyrians, they took the throne when? In 70, 722 BC. 722 BC. Okay. And Cyrus came into power. What year was that? I'm jumping ahead. In 559 BC. So Isaiah is prophesying during the time of the Assyrian reign. Towards the end of it. You understand? So I'm trying to show you that Cyrus is not even born yet. Okay? Watch this. Now, jump down to verse 13. Okay? Verse 13. I have raised him up in righteousness and will direct about, all his ways. <clears throat> talk about Cyrus. He says, I've raised him up in righteousness. He's talking about Cyrus here. Okay? The one that we're going to read later on in the book of Ezra. Read that again, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. Read. I have raised him up in righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I will direct all his ways. Mm -hmm. He shall build my city. Stop and right he there. shall let go Hold on, my wait. captive. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. He says he shall what? He shall build Hold on. my city. Is there a delay? It looks like there's some kind of a delay, right? Yes, sir. Okay, can you drop off and come back in? I don't want to mess this up, okay? Drop off and come back in, all right? This is too good. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up, okay? Bear with me, brothers and sisters, all right? All praises to the Most High. Okay, all praises to the Lord. Okay, okay, let's test that. Isaiah 45, verse 13 again. Read that. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. Go ahead. I have raised him up in righteousness, mm -hmm. and I will direct all his ways. Read. He shall build my city. Come on. And he shall let go my captives. Mm. Not go for ahead. price, no reward, said mm -hmm. the Lord of hosts. So now you see what the Lord is prophesying through Isaiah. He said, listen, this, this Cyrus who is my anointed, Cyrus is not even born yet. You understand? It says, I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall let go my captives. Who's God's captives? That's us. You understand? That's us right there. It says, not for, not, not for price, no reward, said the Lord of hosts. Because remember in verse 1, he says, he says what? He says, to open before him the two lived gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Meaning he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna give Cyrus riches beyond belief. You understand? And how is he going to get these riches? Watch the next verse. Come on. Verse 14. Uh -huh. That said the Lord. The labor of Egypt. The what? Merchandise, the labor of Egypt. The labor of Egypt. Read on. And merchandise of Ethiopia. Ethiopians, come on. And the Sabians. And the what? And, the, and of the Sabians. And of the Sabians. The Sabians, that's the Somalians. So the Lord is saying he's going he's gonna to allow Cyrus to conquer Egypt. You understand? The merchandise of Ethiopia. And of the Sabians, the Somalians, go ahead. Men of stature mm -hmm. shall come over, shall come over unto thee. Read. And they shall be thine. They are going to be yours. Read on. They shall come after thee. Uh -huh. In chains, they shall come over. You see what the Lord is saying? Hold on. So think about this thing, right? Think about this thing. You see all these nations just be conquering, okay? The nations be conquered. They think it's them that's doing it. No, no, no. The Lord is the one that's doing it. The pure example is right here. The Mosa is the one that is moving the hearts of these kings of the earth. He's the one that is making China to build this hypersonic uh, missile that is faster than the speed of light of sound defying the laws of physics, okay? He's the one that's doing that. He's the one that is making the Arabs to behave the way that they do. He's the one that is moving the, the minds of the scientists of Iran 
to build nuclear bombs. Mm. The Lord is the one that's doing that. So they think they are the one that they, mm -mm, they are not in control. Okay. For whose benefit? Our benefit. That's right. That's some beautiful stuff right there. Read that thing again, man. Whew. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 14. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, mm. the labor of Egypt, Come on. and merchandise of Ethiopia, Read. and of the Sabians, mm. men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come, they shall come after thee. In chains shall they come over, mm -hmm. and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, say, Surely God is in thee, uh -huh. and there is none else. There is no God. They're going to praise the God of Israel that, you listen, God is with you. Uh, that's why you are able to conquer us like this. The Lord is with you. Now watch this, right? Hmm. Keep going. Read verse 15 again. Read verse 15 for me. Verse 15. Read. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself. Mm. O God of Israel, the Savior. You see what he's saying? It says, Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself. O God of Israel, the Savior. The Lord will not make it known. He's not going to make it plain that he's the one that's behind this. Okay? He's not going to make it plain that I'm the one that's behind this. They're just going to think Cyrus is the one. Okay? But watch this. Give me... Now, I'm going to take a step back a little bit. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. You know what? Keep going. Read 2 Chronicles 36, 22. 2 Chronicles. Okay? 2 Chronicles 36. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22. Go ahead. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, mm -hmm. that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. Read. The Lord stirred up the spirits of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom mm -hmm. and put it also in writing, saying, Read. Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, Mm -hmm. All the kingdoms of the earth had the Lord, had the Lord God of heaven given me. And Hold he has on. chosen me. What did he say? All the what? All the kingdoms of the earth had the Lord God of heaven given me. Right? And he had charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Come on. Who is there among you of, of all his people? The Lord his God be with him and let him go up. So now you notice here it says, um, it says what? It says all the kingdoms of the earth had the Lord God of heaven given me. Remember, Babylon, he, he, ba the Babylonians, they had us in captivity. They had northern kingdom in captivity, right? I mean, no, no. Uh, the, the, the Assyrians, they had northern kingdom in captivity. So when Babylon took over, they took the Assyrians and the Assyrians had northern kingdom in slavery. You understand? So Nebuchadnezzar had the Assyrian empire under his dominion and he had us because we were slaves under the Assyrians. Okay? And he had Judah under his dominion. Now you've got Babylon that took the Assyrian empire and all the kingdoms that they ruled over and, he, and us in slavery. So Nebuchadnezzar was powerful. You understand? So now, here Cyrus, he says, he, not only was he given Egypt, not only was he given Ethiopia, not only was he given uh, the Sabians, but he was given the Assyrian Empire also. You understand? That's why he is saying, all the kingdoms of the earth had the Lord God of heaven given me. And he had charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. When did we, we, where did we read that? In Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah 45. Okay. We read that in Isaiah. Isaiah 45, read verse 13 again. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. Go ahead. I have raised him up in righteousness, mm -hmm. and I will direct all his ways. Read. He shall build my city, mm -hmm. and he shall let go my captives. 
Come on. Not for price, no reward, said the Lord of hosts. You see that because the Lord is the one that's going to deliver those kingdoms under his domain. The Lord will do that thing. So now what Isaiah is prophesying about is what we're reading here in Second Chronicles. Okay. It says, it says, and charge me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Because what? This is fulfillment of prophecy. Now, Cyrus, he, Cyrus took the throne in 559 BC. So write that down. Cyrus, he took the throne in 559 BC. But hold on a second. We need to take a step back a little bit. Because remember, mm, mm, mm. let's take a step back. Because remember, go back to Daniel. Okay. Give me Daniel 8. I'm going to edit that out. Okay. Daniel chapter 8 and verse, read Daniel 8 and verse 4. You know what? Daniel 8 verse 3 and 4 together again. Read that. I'm going to take a step back a little bit. Okay, come on. Daniel chapter 8 verse 4. Read. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither no, no, was no, the no. Aim. Hold on, no, no. Verse 3, 3 and 4 together. Stay with me. Okay, put some power in your reading too. Read that again. Daniel 8 verse 3. Daniel chapter 8 verse 3. Go ahead. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. Mm -hmm. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the Come higher on. came up last. The higher came up last. So this higher horn that came up last was the king, was the Persian Empire, right? Go ahead. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that mm. no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. So now this is the vision that Daniel saw. He saw a ram that had two horns. One horn was lower than the other. The other one was higher. Now, we're going to deal with the, 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 the lower horn of the ram. Jump down to verse 21. Now I'm in verse 20. Okay. Daniel chapter 8 verse 20. Go ahead. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. Are the kings of Media and Persia. Because when Cyrus took the throne, he had to dethrone someone. First, there's somebody that he had to dethrone in order for him to rule over Persia and swallow up the media empire. Watch this. Give me the book of Bell and the Dragon, okay? Bell and the Dragon. Watch this. Bell and the Dragon, chapter 1, verse 1. Bell and the Dragon, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. And King Astyages was Astyages. gathered to his... King Astyages. Okay, come on. Baal and the dragon, chapter 1, verse 1. And King Astyages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. Read that again, I'm sorry. Baal and the dragon, chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> Read. And King Astyages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. So you see that part right there? It says, and King Astyages was gathered to his fathers and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. So remember, is Media and Persia. Media is the one that came up first. You understand? And Persia is the one that came up last. So now, and Persia was going to be greater than Media. So Media, I mean, Persia has to take over. So guess what? They're going to swallow up the Media empire. Then they're going to be even more greater. Watch this. Now, I'm going to share my screen real quick, okay? So we can uh, read about Astyages, okay? King Astyages, all right? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. So this is Britannica.com. Okay, read, 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 read the title there. Astyages, king of media. Okay, Astyages was the king of media. Because he ain't Bell and the Dragon, it doesn't say that. You understand? Okay, let's read on. Read, the, read, read, read that paragraph now. Come on. Astyages, Akkadian, Ishtumegu, 
flourished 6th century BC. So 6th century, king, hold on, 6th century, that's 500, okay, that's 500 BC. Go ahead. The last king of the Median Empire the reigned. What? The last king of the Median Empire. The last king of the Median Empire. So Astyages, okay, which is also called Akkadian Ishtumegu, okay, they pronounce it in, in an Elamite language now, but it says he was the last king of the Media Empire. Okay, come on. Reigned 585 to 550 BC. All these are just approximates. Okay, come on. According to the Herodotus. According the to Herodotus. Herodotus. Okay, come on. According to Herodotus, the Archimanian Cyrus the Great was Astyaris' grandson through his daughter, Monday. Oh, hey, come on. But this relationship is probably legendary. Go ahead, read. According to Babylonian inscripts, inscriptions, Cyrus, mm -hmm. king of Anshan in southwestern Iran, began in south war against... Hold on. In southwestern Iran. Uh... Uh, can you see? Can you still see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, uh, where was we at? According to Babylonian inscriptions, read that. According to Babylonian inscriptions, Cyrus, mm. king of Anshan, in southwestern Iran, began read. war against Astyages in 553 BC. So now the Persians, these are Iranians. Okay. The Persians are Iranians. Today will be that, that uh, military general that was assassinated by Donald Trump. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Um, I forgot now. I forgot the name. Just I can't bring it back. Suleiman. He was Suleiman. Yes. Yes. Suleiman. Thank you. Suleiman. Okay. Suleiman. So that's them. Go ahead. In 550. The Median troops rebelled no? and Astyages in, in 550. Oh, yeah. come on. The Median troops rebelled and Astyages was taken prisoner. Mm -hmm. Then Cyrus occupied and plundered Ecbatana, the Median capital. Read. A somewhat different account of these events is given by the Greek writer Sessian. Sestiasis, Sestiasa, Sestiasis. Okay, that's it on that. Okay, that's it on that. Yeah, I just wanted to go over that so that we go back to uh, Bell and the Dragon. Read that again. Bell and the Dragon, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. And King Astyages was gathered to his fathers, and mm. Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. You see that thing? And Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. So what we just read, Astyages was the king of Media. So when Cyrus took the throne, he dethroned the Media, the Median king, Astyages. Okay. Now let's go back now. Now let's fast forward. Okay, to the rule of Cyrus. Now give me uh, First Esdras. Okay, give me First Esdras two verse one. First Esdras chapter two, verse one. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. In the first year of Cyrus, king of the Persians, that the mm. word of the Lord might be accomplished, that he had promised by the mouth of Jeremy. Read. The Lord raised up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of the Persians, and he made proclamation through all his kingdom and also by writing. Okay, hold on. Read that again. What, what verse you at? Verse 2, sir. Read again. I'm sorry. First Ezra, chapter two, verse two. Go ahead. Start of verse one. I'm the Lord. Sorry. Start of verse one. Start of verse one. First Ezra, chapter two, verse one. Read. In the first year of Cyrus, king of the Persians, that the word of the Lord might be accomplished, that he had promised by the mouth of Jeremy. Mm -hmm. So the now, Lord, Jer the, the word of Jeremiah is going to be accomplished or fulfilled. Remember, the Lord says, "I have my." I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promise my good word unto you. I'm paraphrasing it. You understand? That we read in Jeremiah 29. Okay, read. The Lord raised up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of the Persians, 
and he mm. made proclamation through all his kingdom and also by writing. Now stop right there. So now the Lord is raising up the spirit of King Cyrus now. So when did King Cyrus take the throne? Okay, watch this. Um, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, tell me if you can see my screen. Yes, sir, I can see it. Okay, all praises. So this is Wikipedia. It's got uh, some bones in it, but, you know, just bear with me. Read that. Cyrus the Great, that's him. That's Cyrus the Great who are reading about you. Cyrus the Great. Mm -hmm. Come on. Cyrus, second of Persia, 600 to 530 BC. So 600 to 530 BC. So now let me scroll up so we can see exactly when he, uh, when he took the throne. Read that, kings of the Achaemenid Empire. Read that. King of kings King. of the Achaemenid Empire. Okay, read that. King of kings of the Achaemenid Empire. Uh-huh. Reign. Reign, 559 to 530 BC. Okay, that's it right there. So 559 to 530 BC. That's when uh, Cyrus took the throne, okay? So now, let's read about him a little bit. Then we're going to go back to the scripts. Okay, read that again. Cyrus, the, Cyrus, second of Persia, read that. Cyrus, second of Persia, 600 to 530 BC, commonly mm. known as Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great. So this Cyrus that we're reading about in, in First Ezra 2, that's Cyrus the Great. Okay, come on. And also called Cyrus the Elder by the Greeks, was mm. the founder of the Achaemenid Empire, the first Persian Empire. The first Persian Empire. Okay, come on. Under his rule? Under his rule, the empire embraced all the previous civilized states of the ancient Near East. Expanded of the what? Vast... Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Is this under his rule what happened? Under his rule, the empire embraced all the previous civilized states of the ancient Near East. So it says, under his rule, the empire embraced all the previous civilized states of the ancient Near East. Who was owning all those ancient Near East? Nebuchadnezzar was doing that. So when he took over, guess what? He took over all those empires as well. Okay, come on. Expanded vastly and eventually conquered most of Western Asia and much of Central Asia. So Western Asia, okay, and much of Central Asia. So now this goes into what? The so-called towards the East also, that goes into India, you understand? So that's, those are the empires that was ruling, including the so-called Middle East, you understand? Do you remember, these are Iranians, okay, read. From the Mediterranean Sea from and the Hellespont. From the Mediterranean Sea, come on. From the Mediterranean Sea and mm. Hellespont in the west to the Indus River in the east, Cyrus the Great created the largest empire the world had yet seen. You see that thing? Who did that? The Mose God did that thing. The Mose God did that thing. We coming back here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to this history, okay? So let's continue. Go back to First Ezra. First Ezra 2, read verse 1 again. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. In the first year of Cyrus, king of the Persians, that the mm. word of the Lord might be accomplished, that he had promised by the mouth of Jeremy. Read. The Lord raised up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of the Persians, and he made proclamation through all his kingdom and also by writing. Read. Saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of the Persians, the Lord of Israel, the most high Lord, hath made me king of the whole world. Mm, come on. And commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Jewry. In Judah. So now is, you see what he's saying in verse 3. It says, Thus says Cyrus, king of the Persians, the Lord of Israel, the most high Lord, hath made me king over the whole world. So is he talking about the whole world, including North, Central, and South America? No, he's not talking about that. This is talking about the old world that was known back then. Nobody had known, nobody was aware of the new world. You understand? The only one that knew about the new world, give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 13, so we can clear those confusions right now. 
Second Ezra chapter 13, okay? Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse, start of verse 41. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 41. Read. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Now, this is Northern Kingdom here. This is Northern Kingdom talking among themselves. Go ahead. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Mm -hmm. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. Come on. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Read. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely uh -huh. of a year and a half. Mm. And the same region is called Azareth. You see what he's saying? And the same region is called Azareth. He says, where never mankind dwelt. So that's the new world. You understand? That's the new world. So when Cyrus is talking about you know, the whole world, he was not talking about this world of this world, this new, this, this world that where never mankind dwelt. He wasn't talking about that. He was talking about the old world, that which was the known world in his time. He wasn't talking about Azareth. Azareth is the biblical name for America today. That's where Northern Kingdom went. And they traveled for a year and a half. You understand? So he's not talking about this world that we're reading about in 2 Ezra 13. Okay, go back to 1 Ezra 2 now. 1 Ezra 2, verse 3 again. 1 Ezra chapter 2, verse 3. Read. And Saying, thus says Cyrus, king of the Persians, the Lord of Israel, the most high Lord, has made me king of the whole world mm -hmm. and commanded me to build him in house at Jerusalem in Jewry. Uh, what verse you had? No, read verse 3 again for me. Verse 3 again. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 3. Read. Saying, thus says Cyrus, king of the Persians, the Lord of Israel, the most high Lord, has made me king of the whole world. Read. And commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Jewry. Come on. If therefore there be any of you that are of his people, let the Lord, even his Lord, be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem that is in Judea and build the house of the Lord of Israel. For he is the Lord that dwelleth in Jerusalem. So Jewry is making reference to Judah. Jewry is making reference to Judah. Go ahead. Whosoever then dwell in the places about, let them help him. Those, I say, that are his neighbors with gold and with silver. So now he's saying, listen, those of you, you Israelites, you understand, that will not be going to with your brothers to go and build, help your brethren with gold and with silver. You understand? That's what he's saying. Read. With gifts, with horses and with cattle and other things which have been set forth by vow for the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem. Come on. Then the chief of the families of Judea and of the tribe of Benjamin stood up, the priests also and the Levites, and all mm -hmm. they whose mind the Lord had moved to go up and to build a house for the Lord at Jerusalem. Stop right there. So I want to deal with this verse right here. It says, then the chief of the families of Judea and of the tribe of Benjamin stood up. So you've got Judah, Benjamin, okay? And the priest also and the Levites. And all they whose mind the Lord hath moved to go up. So that's the part we want to deal with. Hold this. Give me Ezra 1 and 1. Ezra. Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he mm -hmm. made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Read. Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Come on. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. 
and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. You see that part right there? It says, let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. You understand? That's why he says, in fact, go back to First Ezra 2, read verse uh, 4. First Ezra 2, verse 4. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. And commanded me to build him in house at Jerusalem in Jewry. In what? In Jewry. You see that part right there? In Jewry. In Jewry. So Jewry is Judah. Go back to Ezra 1. Okay. Ezra 1, verse 3. Ezra chapter 1, verse 3. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the thing? house of the which, Lord. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. Which is in what? Which is in Judah. Which is in Judah. Which is in Judah. Which is in Judah. Read that part again. Ezra chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. Who is there among you of all his people? His mm -hmm. God be with him. And let Come him on. go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah which is in Judah. So Judah is Jewry. Okay, Judah is Jewry. So write that down, okay? Write that thing down. Don't forget that. Okay, read that again. Ezra chapter one, verse three. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go mm -hmm. up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah and build the house of the Lord God of Israel he is the God which is in Jerusalem. Come on, read. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let mm. the man of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the freewill offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Read. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to Stop go right up there. to... Hold on. With all what? With all them whose spirit God had raised. So now he says, with all them, with all them whose spirit God has raised. That's the same thing we read in First Ezra 2 verse 8. Then the chief of the families of Judea and of the tribe of Benjamin stood up, and the priests also and the Levites, and all they whose mind the Lord had moved to go up. So these, these are the people that we want to deal with. You understand? These are the people I want to deal with. The, the people also whose, whose spirit God has raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. I want to deal with those people right there. Watch this. Give me Luke 2.36. Luke chapter 2 verse 36. Remember, all Israel is, in, is, in, is under the Persian Empire. So when Northern Kingdom decided, listen, we want to we want to leave, okay? There are those, the majority left, but there were the remnant that remained whose spirit God has raised to help Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Read that, Luke 2, 36, come on. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Go ahead. And there was one Anna, a mm -hmm. prophetess, the daughter mm -hmm. of Penuel, of Read. the tribe of Asher. Of the tribe of Asher. Asher, Asher. Remember, this is during the time of Christ now. Okay, I'm fast forwarding now to the future. This is during the time of Christ. These are the tribes over above, over, over and above Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. There were northern kingdom tribes, the remnant of them. One of them was Asher. Okay, read verse 36 again. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Go ahead. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, mm -hmm. the daughter of Penuel, of Come the on. tribe of Asher. Mm -hmm. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. So now this is our foremother and now from the tribe of Asher. So Asher was in the land. You understand? Give me Matthew chapter 4 verse 15 now. Matthew chapter 4 verse 15. Go ahead. The land of Zabulon and the mm. land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So you've got Zebulon, you've got Naphtali. 
So Naphtali and Zebulon, they also, the remnant of them was also in the land. They are the ones that the, that the Spirit of the Lord raised up to go up to Jerusalem to go and rebuild with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay? Give me the book of John 4, verse 9. John chapter 4, verse 9. Read that. John chapter 4, verse 9. Come on. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, mm -hmm. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. So this is a Samaritan woman. Okay, let's see which tribe she's from. Isaiah 7 verse 9 real quick. Let's get that. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9. We need to understand because what we read in Matthew 4, Isaiah prophesied about it. I'm going to deal with that next in a second. Isaiah 7 verse 9. Read that. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9. Come on. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. The head of Ephraim, the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Go ahead. And the head of Samaria is Ramaliah's son. Mm -hmm. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So the Samaritan woman, she was an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. So now you have Ephraim, you have Asher, you have Naphtali, you've got Zebulon. You see that thing? But watch this. Give me Isaiah 9 verse 1. Okay, remember, Isaiah was prophesying about Cyrus coming into power way before Cyrus was even born. Okay, watch this. And he also prophesied about the tribes that will be there, the tribes that are going to be there, that are going to help Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay, watch this. Isaiah 9 verse 1. Read that. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. Come on. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. And you afterward, see that? he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Go ahead. And afterward, did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. You see that thing? So these two tribes right here that are being mentioned is the same tribes that we read about in Matthew 4. You understand? Those remnants of our forefathers and foremothers whose spirit God has raised to go up to Jerusalem to help rebuild the desolate places. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of 1 Ezra 2 verse 8. 1 Ezra 2 verse 8. Let's go back there. 1 Ezra chapter 2 verse 8. Mm-hmm. Then the chief of the families of Judea and of the tribe of Benjamin stood up, the priests also, and the Levites, and all they whose mind the Lord had moved to go up and mm -hmm. to build a house for the Lord at Jerusalem. Read. And they that dwelt round about them and helped them in all things with silver and gold, with horses and cattle, and with very many free gifts of a great number whose minds were stirred up there too. You see that thing, whose minds were stirred up there too, whose spirit God has raised to a high help. Those that were not going, guess what? They were supposed to help their brethren with silver and gold, free will offerings, arms to build. You understand? So we need arms. Don't get it twisted. Okay? Watch this. Keep going. King Cyrus also brought forth the holy vessels which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and had set up in his temple of idols. So now you can just say Nebuchadnezzar because we know who we are talking about. It's just that the spelling here is different, but it's making reference to the same guy, Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead. Now when Cyrus, king of the Persians, had brought them forth, he delivered them to Mithridates, his treasurer. Uh-huh, come on. And by him, they were delivered to Sanabasa, the governor of Judea. Mm -hmm. And this was the number of them a thousand golden cups and a thousand of silver, censers of silver 29, vials of gold 30, and of silver 2,410, and a thousand other vessels. So now he's giving you, he's getting into the details of the, the, the vessels, the arms that was given to our forefathers, the gifts and so forth, for them to go and build. You understand? And use those treasures to buy wood, timber, and so forth to rebuild. Okay, come on. 
So all the vessels of gold and of silver, which were carried away, were 5,400, three score and nine. Mm -hmm. 5,469. That's what he's going into. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 15. Read. These were brought back by Sarnapasa together mm -hmm. with them of the captivity from Babylon to Jerusalem. From where? From Babylon to Jerusalem. From Babylon to Jerusalem. Because remember, there were those of our forefathers that were still in Babylon. Not everybody was in Jerusalem. You understand? Watch this. Now give me Give me Ezra 1, verse 6. Ezra, chapter 1, verse 6. Okay. Ezra, chapter 1, verse 6. Read. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things, beside all that was willingly offered. Besides all that was what? Besides all that was willingly offered. Besides all that was willingly offered, because the most high God loves a cheerful giver. Go ahead. Don't be cheap. Go ahead. Also, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods. Read. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Mithridas the treasurer, and numbered them unto Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. So even Cyrus also, he assisted with the vessels, you understand, for the house to be built. Because remember, the prophecy was, he's going to build the house of the Lord. How was he going to do it? He was going to commission our forefathers to go up to Jerusalem and build. And he was going to also help them with treasures and vessels of gold that came out of, his, out of the king's treasure. You understand? Read. And this is the number of them. 30 charges of gold, a thousand mm -hmm. charges of silver, nine Read. and 20 knives. Come on. 30 basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, a thousand. Mm -hmm. All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Shesh Bazaar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. So now, the, during the time of Cyrus, we was allowed to we were allowed to do what to go back to Jerusalem and build. Now this is when Cyrus is the king, right? Watch this. Now we're gonna move forward a little bit. Who comes after Cyrus? Okay, watch this because we was allowed to go and build. Okay, under Cyrus, we was allowed to go back and rebuild. Now watch this. Now, let me share my screen real quick so we can see the next king that, that came into power. Watch this. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. So read that. Under his rule, let's go back there again. Now start it with Cyrus, his... Cyrus the second of Persia. Read that. Cyrus the second of Persia, 600 to 530 B.C., Mm -hmm. commonly known as Cyrus the Great and also Wait. called Cyrus the Elder by the Greeks, was the founder of the Achaemenid Empire, the first Persian Empire. Read. Under his rule, the empire embraced all the previous civilized states of the ancient Near East. So now you notice here it says, under his rule, the empire embraced all the previous civilized states of the, of the ancient Near East. So the Persians, they brought civilization as well. But you know why I'm, you know why that's important? Give me first Maccabees real quick. I want to show you something. Because in the history, they teach us civilization started with the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's true or not. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter one. Okay, first Maccabees chapter one, verse seven. Read that. First Maccabees chapter one, verse seven. Come on. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died so alexander dropped dead after 12 years of his reign read and his servants bear rule everyone in his place meaning the four generals that he divided his kingdom to read and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves mm -hmm. so did their sons after them many years read. And evils were multiplied in the earth and what and evils were multiplied in the earth 
And evils was multiplied in the earth. And evils was multiplied in the earth. Not civilization. No, no, evils. You understand? You, there was some evil in the earth. But when, they, when Alexander took over, when the white man took over, it says evils multiplied in the earth. They didn't breed civilization. Where did they get civilization from? You understand? Where did they get it from? It says evils were multiplied in the earth. So what we're reading here about um, the Persian Empire, this is true. But what we're reading in First Maccabees, that's a lie because that's true. What we're reading in First Maccabees, but in the in the in the history in the world in Esau's world, they say they brought civilization, but that's not true. The Lord is saying they brought evil. They multiplied evils on this earth. Okay, they didn't add; they multiplied. So keep that wording in mind. Okay, go back to the article now. In his rule, read that again. Under his rule, the empire embraced all the previous civilized states of the ancient Near East, Read. expanded vastly, and eventually conquered most of Western Asia and much of Central Asia. Mm -hmm. Come on. From the Mediterranean, for the from the, from Mediterranean. the Mediterranean, from the Mediterranean Sea, and mm -hmm. Hellespont in the west to the Indus River in the east. Really? Cyrus the Great created the largest empire the world had yet seen. You see that thing? He says he created the success. largest... Hold on. He says he created the largest empire the world has yet seen. Read on. Come on. Under his successors, the empire eventually stretched at its maximum extent from parts of the Balkans, eastern Bulgaria, Peonia and Thrace, Macedonia, mm. and Southeast Europe, proper in the west, to the Indus Valley in the east. You see that part right there? It says Eastern Bulgaria, Peonia, Thrace, Macedonia. Remember what we read in the book of Daniel. Mm. Watch this. Go back to Daniel. Okay, Daniel 11. Because I know some of you forgot already. Okay, let me jog your memory once again. Daniel 11 verse 2. Read Daniel chapter 11 verse 2. Because remember, the Daniel. Persian Empire, hold on, the Persian Empire is expanding. They are becoming great. Like we read in Daniel 8. He says it's going to be great. Okay? Daniel 11 verse 2. Read that. Daniel chapter 11 verse 2. Go ahead. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, mm. there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. Mm -hmm. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Gracia. You see what he's saying? So remember, Cyrus, Cyrus was the first king of the Persian Empire. So he expanded to multiple places, you conquering kingdoms, right? You're in a different realms and so forth. But guess what? That means the fourth, ki the fourth king that was going to take the throne of Persia he is going to be even more greater, adding on to the success that Cyrus did. You understand? So much so that he's going to stay up against the realm of Grisha, meaning the Greeks. Because you see what it says here? It says, his kingdom, it says, the empire eventually stretched at its maximum, extend from parts of the Balkans, Eastern Bulgaria, Paeonia, and Thrace, Macedonia. That's Alexander's realm. Who's what? Who's yet to rule? Okay. Proper in the west to the Indus Valley in the east. Okay, keep reading. The reign of Cyrus, read. The reign of Cyrus the Great lasted about 30 years. Mm. Cyrus built his empire by first conquering the Median Empire. You see that and thing? The and under, hold on, under Astyages. Under Astyages. Go ahead. Then the Lydian Empire and eventually the Neo Babylonian Empire. The Neo Babylonian Empire. Okay, that's a different history right there. Go ahead. He led an expedition into Central Asia, which resulted in major campaigns that were described as having brought into subjection every nation without exception. You see that thing? He brought into his subjection every nation without exception because the Lord allowed him to do that. You understand? Read. Cyrus did not venture into Egypt 
and was alleged to have died in battle fighting the Masajite along Sire Deria in December 530 BC. So now they are lying here. Here they are lying. Is that Cyrus did not venture into Egypt. Is that true or false? Mm, that's false right there. Go, go back to Isaiah 45. You see, the Bible is the only truth, okay? This, they are lying right here. Isaiah 45 is 14. Read it. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 14. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of mm -hmm. the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee and they shall be thine. So I'll stop right there. Read that part again. Read it again from the top. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 14. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they you shall be part, thine. You see that part right there? It says, thus said the Lord, the labor of Egypt. So is it true that Cyrus did not go into Egypt? That's a lie. Because the Bible says he did. The Bible tells you that he did that. So Wikipedia, they are lying right here. You understand? They are lying. Okay. Now watch this. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to touch on that. Okay. But watch this. Now I want to deal with the next, with the next king that succeeded um, Cyrus. Okay. The next king that succeeded Cyrus, that's uh, Cambyasis. Cambyasis the second. Okay. Let's click on that. Cambyasis the second. Um, read that. Cambyasis the second. By the, way, gonna, by the way, you're not going to read about Cambyasis the second in the scripts. Okay? Because what you notice is that, go back, give me that in, um, in, 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 in Ezra. Okay, Ezra. I'm going to show you why. So what you notice in the Bible, they will mention the, 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 the major kings that played a significant role when it comes to what? When it comes to us and them. So the Lord will mention those empires. All these other kings in between that did not have significant and major, you know, uh, impact. The Lord doesn't mention them. Watch this. Ezra 6 verse 14. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. Go ahead. And the elders of the Jews built it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah mm. the son of Edo. And they built Wait. it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. You see what, which kings they are mentioning? They are mentioning Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes. You understand? And Ahasuerus that is mentioned that we're going to read about in a couple of some things. You understand? And Astyages. Why was, why was Astyages mentioned? Because he was what? He was the last ruling king of the Media Empire. That's why he's mentioned in Bell and the Dragon. You understand? That's why. Okay, go back to Wikipedia now. Okay, Cambyasis. Cambyasis the second, old mm -hmm. Persian, was the second king of kings of the Achaemenid Empire from 530 to 522 BC. So now, uh, Cambyasis, he took over the throne after Cyrus died, 530 BC, approximate. You understand? Go ahead to 522 BC. Read. He was the son and successor of Cyrus the Great, 550 to 530 BC. And his mother was Cassandani. Mm, Cassandani. Okay. So that's it on that. We don't need to go into... We don't need to go into this guy because he's not that important even because the Lord is not even mentioning him. So let's see who came after him, okay? Because he took the throne um, in 530 to 522 BC, okay? Now, the one that succeeded him is Badia, okay? Let's read about that, okay? Badia. Badia, old Persian, mm -hmm. ancient Greek, Romanized, possibly died 522 BC. So approximate, go ahead. Also named as Taniozesis, 
By Sestias. Sestias. Tanyo Sestias. By what? Stiasas. Whatever. Keep going. <laughs> Was the son of Cyrus the Great and the younger brother of Cambyasis the Second. You see that thing? Both Persian kings. So he was the younger brother of Cambyses II, both Persian kings. So he, he, he died in 522 BC. So approximate. Go ahead. Both Persian kings. Yeah, there yeah. are sharply divided views on his life. Badia either ruled the Achaemenid Empire for a few months in 522 BC or mm -hmm. was impersonated by a magus called Kaumata. Gomata. Go ahead. Kumata. Mm -hmm. Old Persian, whose name is given by Tesius as Sphandadates. Old Persian, created by the holy or sacred entity. Okay. So keep reading until he was what? until he was toppled by Darius the Great. So that's the one we want to deal with. Until he was toppled by Darius the Great. Now, who comes after him now? Watch this. Who comes after Badia? Darius the Great. Okay, let's see when he took the throne. Okay, read that. Darius the Great, come on. Darius the Great. Mm -hmm. Darius first. Old Persian. Uh... 550. Read that. Uh -huh. Tiberian 550 to 486 BC. Go ahead. 550 to 486 BCE, commonly known as Darius the Great, was the third Persian king of kings of the Achaemenid Empire, mm -hmm. reigning from 522 BCE until his death in 486 BCE. Now, this is Darius the First. Okay, Darius the First. Now, watch this. You see that part right there? We dealt with who? We dealt with Cyrus, and then we dealt with Cambyses II. You see, he even, um, what's his name? Badia is not even mentioned. They say he was the one, he says he was the third Persian king of, king of kings. So, Badia is not even mentioned, okay? They're mentioning Cyrus, they're mentioning uh, Cambyses II, then they're mentioning Darius I, okay? Go ahead. He ruled the empire at its peak when it included much of West Asia, parts of mm -hmm. the Caucasus, you see part of the Balkans. Hold on. Part of the, of the Caucasus. That's the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. You understand? That's Thrace, Macedonia. He was ruling over them too. Go ahead. Parts of the Balkans, mm -hmm. Thrace, Macedonia, and Paeonia. You see that Most of right the Black there? Sea. Go ahead. Most of the what? Most of the Black Sea coastal regions. That's Esau right there. He was ruling over Esau too. Go ahead. Central Asia, as far as the Indus Valley in the Far East and portions of North and Northern Africa, including Egypt, mm -hmm. Eastern Libya, and coastal Sudan. So he, his kingdom was great. You understand? Read. Darius ascended the throne by overthrowing the legitimate Achaemenid monarch Berdia, whom he later fabricated to be an imposter named Kumata. Read. The new king met with rebellions, with rebellions throughout his kingdom and quelled them each time. He was a major event. The, hold on. He was giving them the beast down. Okay. Read on. A major event in Darius's life was his expedition to punish Athens and Erythria for their aid in the Ionian revolt and subjugate Greece. So now what you want to see here, mm, this is beautiful history right here. Now, I'm not going to go into it tonight. Watch this. Now, what I want to show you what's going on here, right? Um, hmm. Darius the first, watch this. I'm going to just give a taste of it a little bit, okay? Give me first Maccabees. Okay, first Maccabees 1. Verse 1. First Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, 
had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, mm. that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So now what's going on here is that this is Alexander, right? Son of Philip, the Macedonian. Remember, Thrace, Macedonia, pioneer. So Darius the first, he conquered Alexander's father. That's why he was ruling over Greece. So what, what we are dealing with here is Alexander and Darius the third. This Darius here is not Darius the first. This is Darius the third, the fourth king of the Persians. Okay, so I'm going to drop it like that. Let's go back. Now, give me, give me the book of First Esdras. Now, Darius is taking the throne now, okay? So we went over Cyrus, we went over Cambyses, we touched on Badia. Now we're dealing with Darius the first. First Esdras 3 verse 1, okay? First Esdras chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. Now, when Darius reigned, he made a great feast unto all his subjects and unto all his household and unto all the princes of Media and Persia. Read that again. First Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Now when Darius reigned, he made a great feast unto all his subjects, and unto mm -hmm. all his household, and unto all the princes of Media and Persia. So now this Darius is Darius the first. This Darius that we're reading about here, this is Darius the first. You understand? This is around 522 B.C. 522 BC. Okay, come on. And to all the governors and captains and lieutenants that were under him from India unto Ethiopia of 120 and seven provinces. Go ahead. And when they had eaten and drunken and been satisfied, were gone home. Then Darius the king went into his bedchamber and slept and soon after awakened, awaked. Go ahead. Then three young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body spake one to another. Now read verse 4 again. I want you to read verse 4 again slow. Come on. First Ezra chapter 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Then three young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body spake one to another. So now it says three young men, young men, young men, young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body speak one to another. So you've got three Israelites that are talking, having a conversation one to another. You understand? And he's emphasizing, he says, three young men. Three young men. Go ahead. Let every one of us speak a sentence. He that shall overcome and whose sentence shall seem wiser than the others, unto him shall the king Darius give great gifts and great things in token of victory. Read. As to be clothed in purple, to drink in gold, and to sleep upon gold, and a chariot with bridles of gold, and an head tire of fine linen, and a chain about his neck. So the head tire is the mitri. The head tire is the mitri. Go ahead. So now they are saying, listen, verse 3 5 says, Let every one of us speak a sentence, and it says, He that shall overcome, and whose sentence shall seem wiser. Than others unto him shall the king Darius give great gifts. I Meaning, whoever brings the wise sayings, then he will receive the great gifts from the king. Go ahead. Remember, and he, the, hold on, the king is not aware of what's going on here. Okay, read. And he shall sit next to Darius because of his wisdom and shall be called Darius his cousin. Mm -hmm. So now remember. We're reading about Darius here because he was prophesied in Daniel 11. Three kings. You understand? Out of the, those three kings, you've got Cyrus, you've got Darius, you've got Araxerxes that are mentioned. You understand? Because they're going to play a major role in history, in our history. Okay, come on. And then everyone wrote his sentence, sealed it, and laid it under King Darius, his pillow. Read. And said that, when the king is risen, some will give him the writings. And of whose side the king and the three princes of Persia shall judge that his sentence is the wisest, to him shall the victory be given as was appointed. Come on. The first wrote, wine is the strongest. So the first one said, wine is the strongest. Go ahead. The second wrote, the king is strongest. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
the third wrote, women are strongest. But above all things, truth bears away the victory. You see that thing? But above all, truth bears away the victory. Now watch this. Give me, give me first Ezra 4 verse 13 now. You know what? Hmm. Keep reading. Read verse 13. First Ezra chapter 3 verse 13. Go ahead. Now when the king was risen up, they took their writings and delivered them unto him. And so he read them. Mm -hmm. And sending forth, he called all the princes of Persia and Media, and the governors, and the captains, and the lieutenants, and the chief officers. Remember, you see what this thing that just went down. The Lord is the one that has put the spirit on these three young men to come up with this type, with this, with this, with this game, if you would call it. The Lord is the Lord is behind all of this. You understand? Go ahead. And set him down in the royal seat of judgment, and the writings were read before them. Mm -hmm. And he said, Call the young men, and they shall declare their own sentences. So they were called and came in. And he said unto them, Declare unto us your mind concerning the writings. Then began the first who had spoken of the strength of wine. And he said thus, O ye men, how exceeding strong is wine. It causes all men to err that drink it. It maketh the mind of the king and of the fatherless child to be all one. Okay, of hold on. What wait, wait. What verse you at? You are in verse 19. Could you jump back yes, up sir. to verse 17 again? Read verse 17 again for me. First Ezra chapter 3 verse 17. Go ahead. And he said unto them, declare unto us your mind concerning the writings. Then began the first who had spoken of the strength of wine. So the first one that spoke was the one that spoke regarding how strong wine is. Watch this. Now, give me first Ezra 4 verse 13, okay? Because the first, he says, wine is strong. The second one said, the king is strongest. The third says, women are strongest, but above all things, truth beareth away the victory. First Ezra 4, verse 13. Read that. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 13. Then the third, who had spoken of women and of the truth, this was Robert Bell, began to speak. Read that again. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 13. Then the third, who had spoken of women and of the truth, this was Robert Bell, began to speak. So now the third brother is Zerubbabel. Now enters Zerubbabel now. Remember, Darius is the king. You understand? Zerubbabel wasn't, was Zerubbabel was mentioned in Ezra 2. But you must remember now, this is now years have gone by. That's why it says young men. Years have gone by. Darius is, the, is, 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 Darius is sitting on the throne. Darius the first. Zerubbabel now is being introduced at this point. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me Ezra 2 verse 1. Ezra 2 verse 1. Let's read that. Ezra chapter 2 verse 1. Ezra chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity. That of what? those we, that went up out of the captivity. Now remember now. Remember Cyrus gave the decree. Okay, this is years before. Now, years later, you see what's going on now? Now he's going to give you the people that left from the, from the what? That were exiled, you understand? Out of the captivity, which is where? Babylon, you understand? Remember, these are fathers that had children and so forth, okay? And grandkids, all right? Read. Of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon, and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, everyone unto his city. He says, they came, he says what? And came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, everyone unto his city. Remember, in chapter 1, we are reading about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? And th those men and women whose spirit God has raised to go out, to go up and help their brethren to build. The majority of Northern Kingdom, they left. They went to Azareth. You understand? 
So what we're reading here, we're reading about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the remnant of um, Northern Kingdom. Okay, read. Come on, verse 2. Ezra, chapter 2, verse 2. Read. Which came with Zerubbabel, mm. Jeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Reliah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mishpah, Bigvai, Rehum, Bana, the number of the men of the people of Israel. The number of the men of the people of Israel. So these are the, the captives that are returning. Remember, remember, remember now. Hmm. Watch this. Give me go back to Isaiah. Isaiah. We read it earlier, but I know some of you forgot. Read Isaiah 45, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. Go ahead. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. Mm -hmm. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives. He shall what? Not for he shall let go my captives he shall let go my captives he shall let go my captives go back to ezra okay go back to ezra 2 verse 1 again ezra chapter 2 verse 1 read now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity that what that went up out of the captivity that went up out of the captivity, that went up out of the captivity. Remember, he says, he shall let go my captives. That's what we're reading here. He shall let go my captives. Go ahead. Of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon, and mm. came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, everyone unto his city. Read. Which came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Realiah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispah, Bigvai, Rehu, Bana, the number of the men of the people of Israel. So now enters Rizul, Zerubbabel now. Zerubbabel is entering the scene. So Zerubbabel is entering the scene when who was ruling? When Darius was the king, not during the time of Cyrus. Zerubbabel enters the scene when Darius was the king. That's what I need you men and women to understand right now. Watch this. Give Jump down to verse 64. Come on. Ezra chapter 2 verse 64. Read. The whole congregation together was 40 and 2,303 score. So that's what the men, that the men and the women, that was part of what? Those that were being exiled. But particularly, let's talk about the men here. These are men. Okay, these are men. Watch this. Now, give me the book of First Esdras. Okay, go back to First Esdras. First Esdras chapter four, verse thirty-seven. Read that. First Esdras four, verse thirty-seven. First Esdras chapter four, verse thirty-seven. You know what? Read First Esdras three, verse twelve. Then we're gonna jump to chapter four, verse thirty-seven, so we don't lose the thought. Okay. First Esdras chapter three, verse twelve. Go ahead. The third wrote, women are strongest, but above all things, truth bears away the victory. Now chapter 4, verse 13, read. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 13. 13, 13, 1, 3. Then the third, who had spoken of women and of the truth, this was Zerubbabel, began to speak. This was Zerubbabel, began to speak. Jump down to verse 37 now. Now Zerubbabel is going to speak. Okay, this is what he's going to say. Remember, all of this was the plan of the Most High God. Go ahead. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 37. Read. Wine is wicked. Mm -hmm. The king is wicked. Now, Women. watch this. Remember, the first one said wine is strong. The second one said the king is strongest. Now Zerubbabel is shutting down what the things that they said. Okay, because he's got the, he had the wisest saying. Read. Wine is wicked. The mm -hmm. king is wicked. Come Women on. are wicked. Read. All the children of men are wicked. Mm. And such are all their wicked works. Read. And there is no truth in them. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. Read. As for the truth, it endures and is always strong. It the truth is, hold on. 
It says, as for the truth, it endureth and is always strong. Go ahead. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. All praises to the most high. Go ahead. With, with her, there is no accepting of persons or rewards. Read. But she doeth the things that are just and refraineth mm -hmm. from all unjust and wicked things. Come on. And the all wicked men. Things, the wicked things is wine. You understand? The king, women, and all the children of men in verse 37. Come on. And all men do well like of her works. Come on. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Blessed be the God of truth. Ray. And with that, he held his peace. And all with that, the people... he, he, he kept quiet after that. Imagine, he's telling the king to his face, this is what's going on. Keep going. And with that, he held his peace. And uh, all the people then shouted and said, Great is truth and mighty above all things. Mm. Then said on. the king unto him, Ask what thou wilt more than is appointed in the writing, and we will give it thee, because thou art found wisest, and thou shalt sit next to me and shall be called my cousin. So now, usually, after somebody says something like this, Guess what? He would be put to death by a king over a kingdom. Remember, the Persian Empire was great. So after Zerubbabel said what he said here, he was supposed to be put to death. Babe. But what I'm showing you here is that the Most High God was in all of this. Because remember, he's saying Isaiah 45 verse 13, he says, and my captives. Zerubbabel was one of them. You understand? And the next, the next thing that the king did, he said, listen, ask what I shall do unto you. Ask what I what he says what, ask what thou thou will will more than is appointed in the writing. So he's asking also what do you want? Okay, go ahead. Then said he unto the king, mm -hmm. Remember thy vow which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem, in the day when thou camest to thy kingdom. So now he's reminding the king, say, remember thy vow. You understand that you are gonna what assist as you're gonna help us to go back and rebuild. Go ahead. And to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Jerusalem, which Cyrus set apart when he vowed to destroy Babylon and to send them again thither. So now, it's in Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was about his people. That's what I want you to understand, you brothers. Zerubbabel was about his nation. He was not interested in, I'm going to be my, the king is going to call me my cousin or I'm going to kill the king, the, call the king my cousin. No. He was not interested in none of that thing. He was about his people. The first thing that he thought about was what? Deliverance for his people. Rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Rebuilding the temple. That was his priority. So it is today. Brothers, especially you brothers, make sure that your mind is focused on your nation. Don't, don't sacrifice your nation for your lust. Mm -mm. You see what our forefather did here? He put his nation first. You understand? That's the qualities of a good leader right there. Read. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 45. Go ahead. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple, which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldeans. So now he's, he's going back into what the Babylonians did, because they made our temples... They, they destroyed us, they destroyed our temples, they burned our records and so forth. They stole and they robbed us of our, of our, of our riches and our wealth. So he said, these things must be restored because the Edomites were helping the Chaldeans to destroy us. Give me that in Psalms 137, verse 7. Because that's what he's really, he's quoting this thing right here that King David was talking about. Read that, Psalms 137, verse 7. Psalms 137, verse 7. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Mm, you're reading. I don't know. I don't know. What's going on? Put some power and energy in your reading. Read verse 7 again. Psalms chapter 137, verse 7. Read. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, 
even to the foundation thereof. That's it right there. Now you sound like you are alive. Go ahead. Verse 8. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy right? shall it be that rewardest thee as thou hast saved us. You see what the, verse 7 says? They said, raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. When they were helping the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, to destroy our temple and to spoil us, to spoil our what? To spoil our possessions. So Zerubbabel is saying, listen, I want you to, to, to be a man of your word and keep the vow that, that you've made when you came into your throne and based on the records that Cyrus, the Cyrus um, left behind, that we will go back and rebuild. You understand? So he's going back to that. Okay, come on. Happy shall he be that no, taketh him. No. no, no, first Ezra. Go back to first Ezra. First Ezra 4 verse 46. First Ezra chapter 4 verse 46. Go ahead. And now, O Lord the King, this is that which I require and which I desire of thee. And mm. this is the princely liberty liberality proceeding from thyself i desire therefore that thou make good the vow the mm. performance whereof with thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the king of heaven meaning the most high god go ahead then darius the king stood up and kissed him and wrote letters for him unto all the treasurers and lieutenants and captains and governors that they should safely convey on their way both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. So now Darius is saying, listen, I'm going to make this thing come to pass. Why? Because he's saying he, want, he was going to keep his, keep his word. So he says, listen, he's going to say, he says, wrote letters unto, unto all the treasurers and the lieutenants and the captains and the governors that they should safely convey on their way, both him, meaning Zerubbabel, okay, and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem, meaning what? I'm going to send you with a band of, with an army to protect you, to look after you as you go with your brothers to go and build Jerusalem. Mm, that's beautiful right there. Go ahead. He wrote letters also unto the lieutenants that were in Celosyria and Phenis, and unto them in Lebanus, that they should bring cedar wood from Lebanus unto Jerusalem, and that they should build a city with him. Lebanus, that's Libanus, Libanus. Go ahead, that's Lebanon. Go ahead. <clears throat> Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm up into Jewry concerning their freedom, that mm. no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, nor treasurer should forcibly enter into the doors. So into their doors, meaning what? He, he made sure that even the people that were ruling in his kingdom, meaning what? The governors, the ministers, and so forth, that's what they are called today, that they must not disturb us as we're going back. Okay, come on, to rebuild. Read. And that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute. Mm -hmm. And that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews, which then they held. You see that thing? That's the same thing today. It says, listen, the second thing that I'm going to give you is that you are not going to pay tax. That's what he's saying. No tax for you. Okay? You Israelites, no tax. It says, over and above that, it says what? It says, and that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute, and that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews, which, they, which, which then they held. Today is the same thing. The Edomites, guess what? It says what? They should give over the villages of the Jews. They must give up over our land. But they're not going to do it willingly. There must be World War III that must pop off in order for them to give it up, because it's not going to happen like that. It's not going to happen. They're not going to just give it up. Mm -mm. There must be war upon that land. The value of Jehoshaphat. That's the only time when they're going to give up our land. You understand? Mm. Jump down. Jump down to verse... Let me see what verse I want. Read verse 58. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 58. Go ahead. You know what? Read verse 53, then we're going to jump. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 53. Go ahead. And that all they that went from Babylon to build the city should have should have free liberty mm -hmm. as well they as their pros prosterity, prosterity and all the, as their prosterity, posterity 
and all the priests that went away. The posterity goes into their fathers as well as what? Their, their fathers, meaning the elders. Jump down to verse 58. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 58. Read. Really? Now when this young man was gone forth, he lifted up his face to heaven toward Jerusalem and praised the king of heaven. He praised the king, praised the Lord. He gave praises to the father that his wife saying, and it was not his wife saying, it was the Lord saying. The Lord put the spirit on Zerubbabel to say this thing. That's why in verse 58, he's giving praise and honor to the father. Read. Right? And said, from thee cometh victory, mm -hmm. from thee cometh wisdom. And thine is the glory, and I am thy servant. Go ahead. Blessed art thou who has given me wisdom. For to thee I give thanks, O Lord of our fathers. Read. And so he took the letters and went out and came unto Babylon and told it all his brethren. Now read verse 61 again. Watch this. First Ezra chapter 4 verse 61. Read. And so he took the letters and went out and came unto Babylon and told it all his brethren. So he took the letters that he received from who? King Darius. You understand? And he says what? And went out and came unto Babylon and told it all his brethren. To do what? To help him to go and build. Watch this. Give me now Jeremiah 29, 15. I'm going to show you something heavy right here. Pay attention. Jeremiah 29, verse 15. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 15. Read. Because ye have said, the Lord hath raised us up prophets in Babylon. Read again. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Because ye have said, the Lord hath raised us up prophets in Babylon. He says, because he have said, the Lord has raised up, has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Jump up to verse 14 so we can understand, because we read it earlier, but I didn't read verse 15 for this purpose right here. Read verse 14 now. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 14. Go ahead. And I will be found of you, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations. And from all the places where I have driven you, says the mm -hmm. Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. So now the Lord is promising us deliverance, you understand, from captivity. Go ahead. Now, in that deliverance, there's something that the Lord is going to also use to what? To make sure that the work gets done. Go ahead. Come on. Because ye have said, the mm -hmm. Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon. The Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Prophets in Babylon. Now go back now. Now go back to where was that? Um, go back to Ezra. Okay, first Ezra chapter 4, verse 61 again. First Ezra no, no. chapter 4. Yeah, 4, 4, verse 61. Read. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 61. Read. And so he took the letters and went out and came unto Babylon, and told it all his brethren. Mm -hmm. And told it all his brethren, right? Go ahead, verse 62. And they praised the God of their fathers, because he had given them freedom and liberty. So now remember in verse 61, it says, he went out and came into Babylon and told it to all his brethren. In Babylon, the people that he's going to stay up, the prophets are also going to be among them that the Lord will raise up to encourage the men to do the work. Read. To go up and to build Jerusalem. To do what? To go up and to build Jerusalem. So he's going to, he's going to Babylon, you understand, and tell all his brethren to go up and to build Jerusalem. Read. And the temple, which is called by his name, and mm. they feasted with instruments of music and gladness even seven days. No, no, seven days. Now, watch this. Now, give me First Ezra 5, 46. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 46. Now, what I'm going to show you here is, what's going on here is this, okay? You know what? Hmm. Yeah, read, read First Ezra 5, 46. Let me not get ahead of myself. First Ezra 5, verse 46. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 46. Go ahead. 
And so dwells the priests and no, the no. Levites. No, no, 56. 56. First Ezra 5. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 56. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Yes, 46. Yes, sir. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 46. Go ahead. And so dwells the priests and the Levites and the people in Jerusalem and in the country, the singers also in the porters and all Israel in their villages. So now they are, remember, they left, during, they, many of them left since during the time of Cyrus, right? Somewhere in Babylon, but remember, Babylon was being ruled over by who? Darius, the Persians. So now it says, so dwell the priests and the Levites and the people in Jerusalem and in the country, the singers also, the porters, and all Israel in their villages, right? Watch this. Now go back to First Ezra chapter 4, read verse 63 again. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 63. Mm -hmm. To go up and to build Jerusalem and the temple, which is called by his name. And they feasted with instruments of music and gladness seven days. So remember, it says they had singers, you understand? They had porters and so forth. So now they are in Jerusalem. Everybody's relaxed. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Ezra now. Give me Ezra 3 verse 1. Ezra. Chapter 3, verse 1. Remember, they were given leave now to go. They were given, they were commissioned to go now and build. And Darius said, I'm going to also help you. I'm going to make sure that nobody bothers you as you go on your way to go to Jerusalem to build. Okay, to rebuild. Okay, now read Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on a second. Go back to First Ezra 4. Something I want out of there. We're coming back here. Okay, First Ezra uh, 5, 546. Read that again. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 46. Go ahead. And so dwelt the priests and the Levites and the people in Jerusalem and in the country, the singers mm -hmm. also and the porters and Wait. all Israel in their villages. Come on. But when the seventh month was at hand. But when the when what? The, but when the seventh month was at hand. When the seventh month, keep that in mind, when the seventh month was at hand. Go ahead. And when the children of Israel were every man in his own place, mm -hmm. they came all together with one consent into the open place of the first gate, which is toward the east. Read. Then stood up Jesus, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Selathiel, and his brethren, and made ready the altar of, of the God of Israel. So now you've got Jesus, the son of Josedek, which is Joshua, the son of Josedek, and you've got Zerubbabel, the son of Salafiel, and his brethren. And it says they made ready the altar of the God of Israel. Okay. Now watch this. Go to Ezra now. 3 verse 1. We're going to read down. Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when the seventh month was come, and the read. children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. So now that's the same account we just read, right? Keep going. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Selafiel, and mm. his brethren, and builded the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Jump down to verse 4 now. Watch this. Ezra chapter 3 verse 4. Come on. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles as it is what written. What did they do? What did they do? They, they kept also the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, hold on, keep reading. As it is what? As it is written. 
So they kept the Feast of Tabernacles as it is written. Remember, they started, they built the altar, okay, of God, of Israel, to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. That means they were in the law, you understand? Because we were in Babylon, we could not keep our customs and so forth. Now we are in Persia, we are allowed now to go back to our customs and our ways, as it is written in the Bible. So now verse 4, it says, they kept also the Feast of Tabernacles as it is written, because they were in the law in verse 2. Go ahead. And offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according mm. to the custom, as the duty of every day required. Now, remember, this is the first year on the seventh month. Okay, jump down to verse 6. Go ahead. Ezra chapter 3, verse 6. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. You see that thing right there? It says the first day of the seventh month, it says they began what? They what? They began, uh, began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple was not yet laid. Watch this. Jump down to verse 8. Come on. Ezra chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem. In, in what year? Month, now in the second year. In the second year. Now they are in their second year now. Remember now, we read they were in their first year on the seventh month. Okay, they celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Now they are in their second year. Okay, read on in the second month. Go ahead. And the foundation the was not month. yet, and the foundation was not yet laid. Read. In the second month began mm -hmm. Zerubbabel, the son of Selassiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. So now Salathiel, okay, not Salathiel, but Joshua and Zerubbabel, they are setting up the men in order for them to build. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 29 verse 15 again. Remember, the foundation was not yet laid. Now we are in the second year. The foundation is not yet laid. Watch this. Jeremiah 29, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 15. Read. Because ye have said, the Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Mm -hmm. The Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Now the Lord is going to raise up prophets because the foundation is not yet laid. The altar was built so that they can what, offer burnt offerings and so forth, but the foundation was not yet laid. So now the Lord is going to raise up prophets that came out of Babylon from exile, you understand, to what? To be able to make sure that the work gets done, to encourage them to what? To build their spirits up. Give me Ezra 5 and 1. Ezra, chapter 5 verse 1. Watch this. This is in the second year now, okay? Watch what happens. Ezra, chapter 5 verse 1. Go ahead. Then the prophets, Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah mm -hmm. the son of Edo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. So now the Lord he says, yeah, I'm going to raise up prophets. The Lord is raising up prophets here. Haggai, Zechariah. Go ahead. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Selassiel, and Joshua, the son of Josada, and began to build the house of God which is at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. You see that thing? The prophets of God was helping these leaders. They were helping, um, they were helping Zerubbabel and they were helping Joshua, the high priest. Watch this, Haggai 1 and 1. The Lord says, I'm going to raise up prophets in Babylon. Okay? And that's what you are seeing right now. Remember that they are in their second year. You understand? Because men of the Most High can't go off. So the Lord says, I'm going to raise up prophets to what? To revive their spirits. Okay. Read that. Haggai 1 and 1. Come on. Uh, just find Zechariah. Find Zechariah, you will find Haggai. Haggai chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in, in the, the what? first year, 
in the sixth month. Remember, we were in the second month, right? Now it's four months later. Okay, come on. In the second year of Darius's reign. Read. Right? In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel. Shealtiel, go ahead. Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying. So now Zerubbabel was the governor. Okay, come on. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts say these people say the time is not come the time that the lord's house should be built mm -hmm. then came the word of the lord by haggai the prophet saying is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste you see that thing remember verse 2 says that speaketh the lord of hosts saying these people who is these people zerubbabel joshua it says that they're saying the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. They say, no, nah, not right now. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Because why? He says, they are dwelling in their sealed houses while the house of the Lord lie waste. Okay, go ahead. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Read on. Ye have so much and bring in little. Mm -hmm. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye Come drink, on. but ye are not filled with drink. Ye Wait. clothe you, but there is none warm. And mm. he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into to put it into a bag with holes. The most high God is saying, because you're not building my house, because you are slack in this business, is as in your life you're gonna have lack. Woo! That's a double S sword right there. Read verse mm. six again. Read again, read it again. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6. Mm. Ye have yeah, so no. much. Hey, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read the verse again so I can get it some more. Read again. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6. Go ahead. Ye have so much and bring in little. Ye uh -huh. eat, but ye have not enough. Go ye ahead. drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Mm -hmm. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages... And it wages to put it into a bag with holes. Yo, yo, ah, that's some heavy stuff right there. Yeah, the Lord is just cutting all over the place. Jump down to verse 12. Go ahead. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealithiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. The people did fear before the Lord, meaning they, are get, they got their minds right. Go ahead. Come on. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. I am with you, said the Lord. The Lord says he's with us. Brothers, the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid. We got this. In the spirit of Christ, we're going to get this work done. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. We're going to get it done. With the little sense we got, we're going to get this work done. Understand that thing. Go ahead. Come on. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheel Shealtiel. 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 Go ahead. The son of Shealtiel, mm -hmm. governor of Judah. And Read. the spirit of Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest. And the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. You see that thing? They got their minds right. Keep going. Come on. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the mm. second year of Darius the king. You see what they did? They got their minds together. They got their act right. Chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. Remember, the Lord Haggai. says, I'm going to raise up. Hold on. He said, I'm going to raise up prophets in Babylon. That's the Haggai is one of them. Okay. Read. Haggai, chapter 2, verse 1. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealithiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Come on. 
who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Meaning and what, how, during the time, hold on. It says, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Meaning the, 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 the old men, the elders, they saw the house in, the, in, in its first glory because during the time of Solomon when he was the king, during the time when David was the king, they saw the temple in his first glory. So now he's encouraging them. He said, listen, don't be slack. Remember how it was when Solomon built it. No, no, they're not going to build it up to that level, but they're going to do our best, you know, to try to replicate what he did. So he says, use that as an encouragement to say, we can do this because we've done it before. That's what he's saying right there. He's encouraging them. Come on. And how do you see it now? Mm -hmm. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? He says, those that have seen the temple in his glory, when you look at now, listen, he says, compared to how it was back then, this is nothing what we are doing. So he's saying, no, we must put more effort in our work. You understand? We must be fervent in the spirit. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, read on. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord, Eight. and work. Come on. For I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. He says, because I'm with you. The Lord is with us, brothers. The Lord is with us. Come on. Verse 5. Come on. According to the word that I covenanted with covenanted. you. According to the word that I covenanted with you when he came out of Egypt. So my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. You see that thing? It says, according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt. Guess what? My spirit remained with you still from that time. So don't be afraid. Fear ye not. Watch this. Give me Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1. Remember now, this was in the what month? This is in the seventh month. In chapter 1 of Haggai, it was in the sixth month when Haggai got on them. Now chapter 2, this is the seventh month. He is be, they are being encouraged once more to say, listen, remember how it was? Let's get, let's get it done. Let's build it to, we cannot get it to that glory, but we're going to build it so such that we're going to beautify the Lord. We're going to do our best. So it is today, brothers. I need you to understand that. Sisters too, so it is today. We're not going to build it like the way Solomon did it, but we're going to do our best to show our faith. You understand? Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1. Remember now, this is this in the seventh month. Haggai the prophet is the one that was raised up during this time. Let's see what happens the second, the, the following month, the eighth month. Who shows up on the scene? Zechariah 1 verse 1. Read that. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo the prophet, saying, Read. The Lord has been so displeased with your fathers. Mm -hmm. You see what he's saying? The Lord has been so, dis so displeased with your fathers. The Lord said, I'm not happy with you. Read on. Therefore, say thou unto them, thus mm -hmm. saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, says the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? The Lord is saying, get your mind right. Go ahead. But ye not as your fathers, and to whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, says the Lord. You see what he says? Zechariah is saying the same thing that Haggai was saying. Remember Haggai was saying in the spirit of the Lord, he saying, Then came the word of, of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, um, no, verse 5 says, Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. What ways? Zacharias is giving is, is being is being is giving more details. Read verse 4 again. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 4. Come on. Be ye not, not as your fathers, and to whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, turn ye now from your evil ways and That's from your ways. evil doings. That's the ways he's talking about in Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. When he says, consider your ways, that's the ways. He says, turn now from your evil ways, okay, and from your evil doings. Go ahead. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, says the Lord. You see that thing? Jump down to verse 12. Come on. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 12. 
Read. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years? Remember, during the time of Zechariah, the three score and ten years, they are done now. Go ahead. Verse 13. And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So now the Lord is going to encourage us. Go ahead. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, say, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. Meaning the Lord is saying, Listen, I'm jealous for my land and I'm jealous for my people because they are not getting their minds right. So it is today. Go ahead. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that I ease. Mm. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Now I want you to read that verse again. You see, there's a heavy verse right there. It makes you want to sit down and just ponder. Read that verse again, verse 15. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that I ease. Stop right For there. I... He says, I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Meaning what? The heathens that are okay with our decayed estate. The heathens that are happy that we're at the bottom. The heathen that are making sure that we continue to remain at the bottom. Because you see what he's saying? Keep reading. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. He says, I was a little displeased, but because they helped forward the, the affliction, meaning they are making it worse, now I'm more displeased. That's what he's saying. So how did they help forward the affliction? We're already afflicted at the bottom. Now we are trying to rise back up to our glory. Guess what? They are making it worse for us. Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of Ezra chapter 4 verse 1. Give me Ezra 4 verse 1. Ezra chapter 4 verse 1. This is how the heathens they help for the affliction and they are at ease. They were okay that we were not building. Now, as we are starting to build, they want to stop us from building. The Lord said, you see, now I'm more displeased now. You understand? Now I'm more displeased because you are helping to forward the affliction. Read that. Ezra 4 verse 1. Ezra chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard when that the, the children of... When the when the adversaries, adversaries, go ahead, read that again, verse 1. Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. So now they heard that we are building the temple. We built the temple, you understand, under the, the lead of Zerubbabel and Joshua. Okay, come on. Then they came to Zerubbabel. And to the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, mm. and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. So now these adversaries that were saying, Listen, let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assur. That's the king of Assyrians which brought us up hither. Now, watch this. These people, because I, I explained to uh, a couple of you brothers what this means. Watch this. Give me that in Second Kings to see who are these adversaries that says, listen, let us build with you. Watch this. Second Kings chapter 17. Okay. This is during the time of, um, let me see. Uh, this is during the time of, uh, this is uh, Shalmaneser the fifth, Okay, watch this. Second Kings chapter 17 and verse, start at verse 29. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 29. How be it, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places, which you know the what? Samaritans... Let, let, let's start it a little bit up. Read verse 26. Yes, sir. Now, these are the, these, now, they, these, what, what was happening here is that, start at verse 24, read 24, then we're going to jump around. Now, what happened is the, the Assyrian king, he put 
He kicked northern kingdom out the land. And he put foreign nations in our land. Like today, you know, the America and the British government, they put uh, Amalek in our land. That's the same thing we are seeing right here. That's the same thing that is going on right here. The thing that went out, that went down during in 1948, the, you know, the Balfour Declaration and so forth. What you are seeing here in 720, around 722 BC, that's exactly what was going on with Shalmaneser. Okay. So read that, 2 Kings 17, 24. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. Read. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and mm. from Kutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvim. Sepharvim, go ahead. Uh -huh. And placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. You see that thing? So the Assyrian king, he kicked us out of the land. He put the Babylonians, you understand, men from Babylon, from Kutha. These are the cities that he ruled over. These are the cities that he had dominion over. So he kicked the northern kingdom out and he put heathens up in the land. That's what American, the British government did in these last days. You understand? Ava, Hamath, and from Sepavim, and placed them in the city of Samaria instead of the children of Israel, and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. That's what's going on today with Amalek in our land. You understand? Because they say, I'm ye Yahura, I'm ye Yahura, I'm Jew too, I'm a Jew. You see? Read verse 25. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Mm -hmm. the Lord sent lions among them which slew some of them so now he says they dwelt in the land but they didn't fear the God of Israel that's what you are seeing today with the Amalek in our land there's a Tel Aviv gay parade every year there's a gay parade in our land that's the same thing that these nations was doing that Amalek is doing today in our land right wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria saying the mm. nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore, he had sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, they spoke to the Assyrian king, said, listen, listen, we are being put to death here. We are being devoured because these lions are killing us, because we don't know the manner of the God of the land. We don't understand how to what how to be on the land, and we are doing our own things, but we can't be on the land because, guess what? We are foreigners on the land. Okay, read. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. So now in verse 27, he's saying, okay, get, get the priests and bring them here. You understand? That's why it says, there are one of the priests whom he brought from thence. He's talking about the priests that Jeroboam set up, which were not, as, not of the sons of Levi. You understand? Like low base Negroes. Okay? That were not even the lineage of, of, of Aaron. They were not even Levi. And they are the ones that what? They came to teach them the men of the God of the land. Okay? Read. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Okay, come, so he taught them how to remain in the land. That's basically what he did. Read what they did. How, rather. Come on. How be it? Every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. You see what they did? So, yes, they were taught the men of the God of the land, but they still wanted to worship and sacrifice to their idols. So one, one way they were keeping the commandments just so they can be in the land, but the rest they were sacrificing there to their idols, you understand, and burning incense unto them. Go ahead. And the men of Babylon made Sakoth Penoth, and the men of Kuth made Negal, and the men of Hamas made Ashima. So now these are what? These are their, their, their gods, their idols, rather. Go ahead. And the Evites made Nibaz and Tartak. And, Tarta, and the Safavites 
bet their children in fire to Adremelech and Anemelech. The so, gods they were, of, so they were committing abortions now in the land. Go ahead. The gods of Sepharvaim. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. Verse 32. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. Read verse 33. Watch this. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. You see that after thing? the manner. They feared the Lord, quote unquote, and served their own gods. They were committing abortions, you know, you understand? Killings, blood sacrifices, and all that. Human blood sacrifices. Okay, go ahead. After the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. So now these people that we're reading about here in Second Kings, they are the same adversaries that came against Zerubbabel and Joshua when we were building that Zechariah. You understand that the Lord spoke to Zechariah about that I'm very displeased that the heathens that are at ease because they are helping to forward the affliction. That's the ones we're reading about here. Go back to Ezra 4. Okay. Ezra chapter 4, verse 3. Watch this. Ezra chapter 4, verse 3. Go ahead. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye mm. have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. You see that thing? It says, but we have, no, we have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together, meaning as the nation of Israel, we alone, we're going to build it. The Lord is with us. You understand? It says, we're going to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel. As King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. That's the mindset we have to have. Why? Because the minute the other nations start to do what? They start to give us... Listen, the other nations, if they want to help, they can just give us money and stay out. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Because that's what Cyrus did, in fact. If you, if you examine Cyrus, Darius, and so forth, that's what they did. They gave us their silver and all of that and said, oh, bless me also and my children. That's what they did. But they were not in the midst of us when we was building. They were not doing that. Okay. Understand that thing. Watch this. Hmm. Keep reading. Ezra chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. You see what they did? After we refused, you see what they did? Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. How are they weakening us today? Because you have to think about it. How are they weakening us? When we have put up videos on YouTube, they take it down. You understand? I don't know how many videos I put up, they took down. I have to just cut stuff out. Okay? So that's how they are weakening us. Okay? They are weakening us, they are weakening us in that way. Another way they weaken us, what do they do? They train the black women to come against us. They train effeminate black men to come against us. They train young black ashy demons that disrespect their parents to come against us. You understand? They create politics and religion. We not they create politics and Christianity, okay, to come against us. That's how they try to weaken us, okay, in building the temple. Go ahead. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So during the time of Cyrus, they did it, they stopped the they what they stopped the work. Even unto the time of Darius, they stopped the work. That's what we're reading about right now. Now watch this. Give me first Ezra 5, 56 now. First Ezra 5 is 56. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 56. Go ahead. And in the second year and second month after his coming to the temple of God at Jerusalem, began Zerubbabel, the son of Selassiel, and Jesus, the son of Joseph, mm -hmm. and their brethren, and the priests, and the Levites, and all they that were come unto Jerusalem out of the captivity. Read. And they laid the foundation of the house of God in the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come to Jewry and Jerusalem. 
Read. And they appointed the Levites from 20 years old over the works of the Lord. Then stood up Jesus and his sons and brethren, and Cadmiel his brother, and the sons of Mediabon, with the sons of Jordan, the son of Eliadan, with their sons and brethren, all Levites, with one accord, set us forward of the business, laboring to advance the works in the house of God. So the workmen built the temple of the Lord. So now what you are seeing here is giving you more details of the people that were involved in the building process. You understand? The people that were involved in the building process. So what you are seeing here is the Lord is trying to show us that, listen, every all hands was on deck. All hands on deck. That's what the Lord is showing us. You understand? Do We must not be slack. Okay, come on. And the priests stood arrayed in their vestments with musical instruments and trumpets. And the Levites, the sons of Asaph, had cymbals. The Levites, the sons of Asaph, that will deal with the singing and all of that because we needed to glorify the Lord and praise him. So while we're doing the sacrifices and all of that, yes, go ahead. Singing songs of thanksgiving and mm -hmm. praising the Lord according as David, the king of Israel, had ordained. Okay, you can read about that in Chronicles. Read. And they sang with loud voices songs to the praise of the Lord, because mm -hmm. his mercy and glory is forever in all Israel. You see that thing? Because his mercy and glory is forever in all Israel. All oh, praises. Go ahead. And all the people sounded trumpets and shouted with a loud voice, singing songs of thanksgiving unto the Lord for the re, for the re airing. For rearing up, for the rearing up. Come on. Uh, singing songs of thanksgiving unto the Lord for the rearing up of the house of the Lord. Meaning the rebuilding of the house of the Lord. So they were encouraging them. Not only were the prophets prophesying to encourage the brothers and the sisters to build, but also they were singing songs of thanksgiving to praise the Lord for the rearing up of the house of the Lord. Okay, come on. Also of the priests and Levites and of the chief of their families, the ancients who had seen the former house came to the building of this with weeping and great cry. You see that they were crying because they saw the, the, the temple standing, re being rebuilt. You understand? Go ahead. But many with trumpets and joy shouted with loud voice. Mm -hmm. In so much that the trumpets might not be heard for the weeping of the people. Yet the multitude sounded marvelously so that it was heard afar off. So now it says there was so much cry that you couldn't tell whether the cry was from the joy or the cry was weeping. You understand? There was all, it was, there was this commotion of the people weeping and crying. Some were shouting for joy because the building, they could see the building now. You see that? That's beautiful right there. That's why now you see we are progressing, brothers. Don't be discouraged. We are progressing. Okay? This is not for nobody. This is not for everybody. Not everybody can build. You understand? The most High God will put the spirit on brothers to build, to, to build this great house. And that's not a small job. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 66. Come on. Wherefore, when the enemies of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin heard it, mm. they came to know what that noise of trumpets should mean. And they perceived... And they perceived that they that were of the captivity did build the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. You see that thing? When they had the trumpets, because we would blow the trumpet, we would sing, we would praise the Lord, and guess what? It says what? Our adversaries, our enemies, they perceive, oh, they are building now. They are building. That's why when we shut down the streets, we go to the street, the nations know what time it is. The nations know exactly what time it is. I remember we were teaching in Macedon, right? And there was this Persian. I don't know if it's Persian or he's Ishmael. I think it's Ishmael. And he was standing next to this Israelite brother. And he kept pointing at us. And he was upset. He was very upset. And we were bringing it out. He was not, he was unhappy about that. That's Ishmael right there. Ishmael. You understand? And that's the same thing we're reading here. That's the spirit that jumps on them. 
Okay, because Ishmael has been very relaxed here in the continent, very relaxed. That's why now they're even with us in the Cassis. You understand? They are so relaxed. You just look at them. When you are in the Cassis, you see how the Ishmael behaves. Is like he's listen. Is like this is his second home. Okay, so now as we are waking up, we are disrupting that 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 comfort. Okay, read. Right? Verse Ezra, chapter five, verse sixty-eight. Go ahead. So they went to Zerubbabel and Jesus, and to the chief of the families, and said unto them, "We will build together with you." So now, notice, notice, they didn't go to everybody else. No, no, they went to the leaders. Is so they went to Zerubbabel and Jesus, which is Joshua. So they didn't go to the rest of the brothers that was helping. You no, 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 they went to the leadership. You see that thing? Hmm. Keep reading. For we likewise as ye do obey your Lord and do sacrifice unto him from the days of Asbazareth, the king of the Assyrians, who brought us hither. So now this is going into Esarhaddon. Okay, read. Then Zerubbabel and Jesus and the chief of the families of Israel said unto them, It is not for us and you to build together in house unto the Lord our God. Read. We ourselves alone will build unto the Lord of Israel, according as Cyrus, the king of the Persians, has commanded us. Come on. But the heathen of the land lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight hindered their building. So they, they were hindering our building even during the time of Darius. Go ahead. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, they hindered the, the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. You see that thing? So they, were, they hindered us during the time of Cyrus. They hindered us during the time of Darius. So they keep hindering our work. So what I'm showing you here is that it says by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions. The secret plots goes into what? The spies. Spies, they are real. Mm, informants. Those people are real. Don't think that those are just fairy tale. The Apostle Paul says he wrote for the space of three years, warning our people, the churches, say, listen, watch out for the spies. The women also, don't sleep on the sisters. Okay? We are living in dangerous times now. Okay? Anybody can be activated. So stay in the spirit. Okay? As we are building this great house. Watch this. Now, give me, go back to Ezra now. Let me see. Hmm. Give me first Ezra. Okay, give me first Ezra 5, verse 1. First Ezra, chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. After this were the principal men of the families chosen according to their tribes to go up with their wives and sons and daughters, with really? their manservants and maidservants and their cattle. That's when we're given commission to go and build. Go ahead. And Darius sent with them a thousand horsemen till they had brought them back to Jerusalem safely and with mm -hmm. musical instruments. You see that thing? That's, what, that's what we read earlier. Okay, come on. And all their brethren played and he made them go up together with them. Read. And these are the names of the men which went up according to their families among their tribes after their several heads. Read. The priests, the sons of Phineas, the son of Aaron, Jesus, the son of Josedek, the son of Sarias, and Joachim, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Selathiel, of the house of David, out of the kindred of fairies of the tribe of Judah. Fares, so Fares, you can read about that in uh, Matthew 1. Okay, go ahead. Who spake wise sentences before Darius, the king of Persia, in the second year of his reign, in the month Nisan, which is the first month? In the month Nisan, which is the first month. Go ahead. And these are they of Jewry that came up from the captivity, where they dwelt as strangers, whom Nebuchadnezzar, where they, the, where they dwelt as strangers. 
where they dwelt as strangers, where they dwelt as strangers. So when you read about the strangers in the in First Peter, okay, First Peter one and one, it's talking about them. They're strangers. You understand, scattered in Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, and Galatia, and so forth. So it was back. It, so it, during this time, we were scattered and we were strangers in these lands. During the time of the apostles, it was the same thing. We were called strangers. Okay, come on. So it is today. We are called strangers. Okay, come on. Where they dwelt as strangers, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon. Mm -hmm. So and now, they watch this. Uh, yeah, keep reading. Verse 8. Re read verse 8. And they returned unto Jerusalem and to mm -hmm. the other parts of Jewry, every read. man to his own city, who came with Zerubbabel, with Jesus, Nehemiah, and Zacharias, and Reasias, Ananias, Mordecai, Beelzerus, Aspharasus, Rielius, Roimus, and Bana, their guides. Their guides. Okay, now watch this. Now, hmm. Go back to Ezra. Give me Ezra 4, verse 6 now. Watch this. Ezra 4, verse 6. Pay close attention. I'm almost done. Ezra 4, verse 6. Now remember, we were Cyrus, okay. Then we dealt with Cambyses the second, Badia, okay, which was not even counted by even the historical accounts. Then we dealt with who? We dealt with um, Darius the first, okay. So now, during the time of Darius, you see your, that's when Zerubbabel showed up on the scene during the time of Darius the first, okay. And then now, um, we were allowed to go and build as we are building. There was a lot of opposition against us and so forth, but we still continue to build. Now watch this. Give me Ezra 4 verse 6. Ezra 4 and 6. Ezra chapter 4 verse 6. Go ahead. And in the reign of our Osiris, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they mm -hmm. unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Read that again. Ezra chapter 4 verse 6. Go ahead. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So now, during, this is now, remember, this is no longer during the time of Darius now. This is a time jump, okay? This is a time jump. Remember, um, Darius was from 522 BC to 486 BC. That was his reign. 522 BC to 486 BC. Now, there's a time jump now. It says, in the reign of Ahasuerus. Okay, Ahasuerus. Who is Ahasuerus? Let's see. Let me share my screen real quick. So we can see who is Ahasuerus. Okay. Okay, so. Um, so, you can, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All oh, praises. Okay, so now, um, well, who are this is Darius the Great, right? Now let's see who succeeded him. Okay, Xerxes the first. Xerxes. Xerxes the first. Now read that. Xerxes the first. Xerxes the first. Mm -hmm. Old Persian. Five hundred and eighteen to August, four hundred and sixty-five BC. Commonly known as Xerxes the Great was the fourth king of kings of the Achaemenid Empire, mm -hmm. ruling from 486 to 465 BC. So now he ruled from 486 BC to 465 BC. Go ahead. He was the son and successor of Darius the Great, mm -hmm. 522 to 486 BC. Go and ahead. his mother was Atossa, a daughter of Cyrus the Great, 550 to 530 BC, the founder of the Achaemenid Empire. Like his Wait. father, he ruled the empire at its ter territorial, territorial apex. apex. Meaning what? When they, were, when they were still in power, territorial meaning they gained a lot of territory, they were conquering, that's when they were at their apex. Go ahead. He ruled the empire at its territorial apex. He ruled from 486 BC 
until his assassination in 465 BC at the hands of Aterpenes, the commander of the royal bodyguard. So he was killed by the commander of the royal bodyguard. Hmm. Watch this. Let's go down a little bit. Mm. Read that. Xerxes the first. Read that. Xerxes the first is notable in Western history for his invasion of Greece in 480 BC. You see what these patients was doing? They were really giving Esau a hard time. Eh? You understand? That's why when Donald Trump took out um, Qasem Soleimani, this is this is the spirit of all, just revenging. Think about it. When he killed the top military general, this is what we're reading here. You understand? These are spirits of all just coming back. Okay, read that again. Xerxes the first. Xerxes the first is notable in Western history for his invasion of Greece in 480 BC. Read. His forces temporarily overran mainland Greece north of the Ishmas of Corinth mm -hmm. until losses at Salamis and Plataea a year later reversed these gains and ended the second invasion decisively. Really? However, Xerxes successfully crushed revolts in Egypt and Babylon. Mm. Roman Gershman says that after this, he ceased to use the title of King of Babylon calling himself simply king of the Persians and the Medes. That's right, Go ahead. Xerxes also oversaw the completion of various construction projects at Susa and Persepolis. Watch this, read that. Xerxes is identified with the king of Osiris in the biblical book of Esther. Stop right there, read that again. Xerxes is identified with the king of, with the king of Osiris in the biblical book of Esther. So Xerxes is identified with the king Ahasuerus in the biblical book of Esther. Read on. Which some scholars consider to be historical romance. They are talking nonsense. The book of Esther is not a romantic, no, it's not a romantic, uh, it's not a historical romance. The hell is this? You know, Esau is the damn devil the Bible speaks of. Now, watch this. We know that Xerxes is Ahasuerus, which is during the time of our foremother, Queen Esther. Hmm. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezra now. Now Esther 11 verse 2. Esther chapter 11. In the Apocrypha. Chapter, Esther chapter 11 verse 2. Read that. Come on. Page 55. Just go to page 55. You'll find it. Esther, chapter 11, verse 2. Read. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes the Great. Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes the Great, that Xerxes the First. Artaxerxes the Great, that Xerxes the First. Go ahead. In the second year of the reign of Artaxerxes the Great, in the first day of the month Nisan, mm -hmm. Mordecai, the son of Jairus, the son of Simei, the son of Sisai of the tribe of Benjamin had a dream. So now Artaxerxes, which is Xerxes the first, Artaxerxes the great. He, he, notice that he didn't just say Artaxerxes, he says Artaxerxes the great, which is Xerxes the first. Okay, this is during the time of Esther now. I'm putting the pieces for the puzzle together so you can see in the spirit of Christ. Esther chapter 1, verse 1. Esther chapter 1, verse 1. Let's read that. Esther chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over 107 and 20 provinces. Mm -hmm. Come on. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace. You see, remember what we read in Esther chapter 11. It says Susa. Go ahead. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. No, no, Susa. We read Susa in the ad on the in Wikipedia. Excuse me, in Wikipedia. Go ahead. Yes, sir. 
In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power mm. of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. So remember, this is in the third year of his reign, in the third year of his reign. So in the first year of his reign, who came to uh, Xerxes or Ahasuerus? Our adversaries that wanted, wanted to stop the building of the temple. This is the third year of his reign when Vashti rebelled. That was in the third year of his reign. In the first year, that's when those, those demons came against us to stop the work. Okay? Give me the book of Esther chapter 3 verse 7 now. Esther 3 verse 7. Esther chapter 3 verse 7. Come on. In the first month, that is the month Nisan, mm -hmm. in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast poo, that is the lot, before payment from day to day, and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month Adar. So now what was happening is that during the time of Ahasuerus, you had an Edomite that came against us. Okay, read. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people, mm. neither keep the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. You see that he says, it's not going to profit the king to allow them to be around us. You understand? So his plan, he wanted to destroy us. Go ahead. Remember, this is Haman the Agagite, which is Amalek, that you read about in 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, somewhere there. Was, yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. If it please the king, let mm. it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring mm. it into the king's treasuries. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm willing to pay top dollar to, de to, de to destroy the Jews. Okay, jump down to verse 14. Esther chapter 3 verse 14. Go ahead. The copy of the writing for your commandment to you be know given. What? Mm. No, no, jump up to verse 10. Read verse 10. I like verse 10. Esther chapter 3 verse 10. Read. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. You see that part right there? He says, Haman was an Agagite, Amalek, the Jew's enemy. Mm. Now jump down to verse 14. Esther chapter 3 verse 14. Come on. The copy of the writing for your commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. So meaning what? To destroy the Jews. The copy of the letter. Now give me Esther 16. No, Esther chapter 13 verse 1. Esther chapter 13. In the Apocrypha, Esther chapter 13 verse 1. Read that. Esther chapter 13 verse 1. Read. The copy of the letters was this. The great king at Xerxes writeth these things to the princes and governors that are under him from India unto Ethiopia in 107 and 20 provinces. Come on. After that, I became lord over many nations and had dominion over the whole world, not mm. lifted up with presumption of my authority, but carrying myself always with equity and mildness. Really? I purpose to settle my subjects continually in a quiet life and making my kingdom peaceable and open for passage to the utmost coast to renew peace, which is desired of all men. So now, at Xerxes, this is Xerxes. He said, listen, I want peace in my kingdom. You understand? I want peace in my kingdom. The problem is Haman is stirring up what is causing, his, he wants to, he's want to start confusion so that now at Xerxes, he focuses on destroying the Jews because that's what Haman wants so that his kingdom can be at the same time destroyed while he's destroying us. You see that? Do you see what he was trying to do? Read. Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Haman, that excelled in wisdom among us and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom, so he was the second to the king. Go ahead. Declared unto us 
that in all nations throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people mm. that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. So now, remember, this is Haman. He has not, remember, he's still holding a grudge from the time we left Egypt because they came against us. Now, when David took the throne, no, Saul took the throne, he killed some of them, the rest he spared. And the Lord was angry about that. Then, when David took the throne, he met, listen, he put them to pieces. He destroyed them, okay? So now, watch this. During the time of judges, they came again. They wanted the land, access to the land. Today, 1948, they did the same thing. You understand? So he's that spirit of old, this Haman. Okay, go ahead. Seeing that we understand that these people alone is continually in opposition unto all men, mm -hmm. differing in the strange manner of their laws and evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can, that our kingdom may not be firmly established. That's the same conversation they are having today, that if we allow these Israelites to go out and teach, we're going to have problems. But they can't stop this thing. It is written. Watch this. Give me the book of Esther 16 verse 1. Now, a lot of stuff have happened now because they discovered, or you understand, the Lord was raised up the spirit of our foremother Esther and our forefather Mordecai and so forth to interject what Haman was planning to do. And he was found out by the king through the spirit of the Lord. Now he's regretting of the things that went down. He's correcting his mistakes now. Esther 16 verse 1. Esther chapter 16 verse 1. Go ahead. The great king Artaxerxes unto the princes and governors of 107 and 20 provinces from India unto Ethiopia and unto all our faithful subjects. Greeting. Now jump down to verse 5. Esther chapter 16, verse 5. Go ahead. Oftentimes also fair speech of those that are put in trust to manage their friends' affairs has caused many that are in authority to be partakers of innocent blood and mm -hmm. has enwrapped them in remediless calamities. He's talking about Haman. Jump down to verse 10. Esther chapter 16, verse 10. For Haman, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the pagan blood mm. and far distant from our goodness and as a stranger received of us. You see what he's saying? So he's saying this, this guy infiltrated our organization and his job, he wanted to destroy us. Go ahead. Had so far forth obtained the favor that we show toward every nation as mm. that he was called our father and was continually honored of all men as the next person unto the king. He was second in charge, but really he wanted to destroy the Persian empire and cause problems to the Persian empire. Read verse 14. Esther chapter 16, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For by these means, he thought, finding us destitute of friends to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. You see, the reason why he did this, he wanted the Persians to lose allies. So now when the Persians have lost the allies, then the Persia is isolated by itself without allies. Now they're going to destroy it. But it was not going to work at this point. You understand? That's why it did not succeed because the Mosai God was in this thing using our foremother Esther and our forefather Mordecai. Now, let's move on to the next set now. Remember, go back to Ezra now. Okay, Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4 and verse 6 again. Ezra 4 verse 6. Ezra chapter 4 verse 6. Go ahead. And in the reign of our Cyrus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote mm -hmm. they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So now what we're reading here is, we just read the account of that during the time of who? Ahasuerus, which is Xerxes the first. Now the next, um, the next king that took over the throne. Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. So... Artaxerxes the first. Artaxerxes the first. He is the next one, is the next Persian king that took the throne. Read that. Artaxerxes the first. Mm -hmm. Whose reign is through truth. 
was the what? Was the fifth king of kings of the Achaemenid Empire from 465 to 424 BC. So now he was the fifth king of the Achaemenid Empire. Okay, come on. He was the third son of Xerxes the first. He was the he was the third son of Xerxes the first. So he reigned from what time? Read that. He reigned from 465 to 424 BC. So from 465 to 424 BC. Now watch this. Give me Ezra 4 verse 7 now. Ezra chapter 4 verse 7. Come Ezra on. Ezra chapter 4 verse 7. Read. And in the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bishlam, Mithridas, Tabiel, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Mm -hmm. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian language, in the Syrian in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. So now in verse seven, you see there's another jump. It says in the days of Artaxerxes, this is Artaxerxes the first. Artaxerxes the first. Okay, watch this. Give me first Ezra 2:16. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 16. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. But in the time of Artaxerxes, king of the Persians, mm -hmm. Belimus and Mithridates and Tabilius and Rath Rathumus and Bealtesmus and Semelius the Semelius. Semelius the secretary. Semelius. Go ahead. And Semelius the secretary with others that were in commission with them, dwelling really? in Samaria and other places, wrote unto him against them that dwelt in Judea in Jerusalem, these letters following. So now our adversaries, they wrote letters to Artaxerxes now, Artaxerxes the first, to stop us from building. You understand? And these same demons is the same demons that were put in our land by who? They were put in our land by uh, the Assyrian kings. Remember, Persia is a, ma is a major empire. So the Persian king is not going to know everything that's going on like that. And they are taking advantage of that. You understand? Go ahead. To King Artaxerxes, our Lord, thy servants, Rathumus, the story writer, and Samelius, the scribe, and Wait. the rest of their council, and mm -hmm. the judges that are in Celosiria and Phenis. Phenis. Go ahead. And Phenis. Mm -hmm. Be it now known to the Lord, the king, that the Jews that are come up from you to us been coming to Jerusalem, that rebellious and wicked city. <laughs> you see what they call us? Is it that rebellious and wicked city? So are these being for real? No, they are not being for real. But you know who they are using? They are using the rebellious kings of Judah to what? To, 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 to sway the king's opinion or mindset towards us. Because remember, Zedekiah rebelled, Jaakim rebelled, Joachim rebelled. So they're going to use those wicked kings to say that's all Israel is like that, which is not correct. Read. That rebellious and wicked city to mm -hmm. build the marketplaces and repair the walls of it and to lay the foundation of the temple. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with us building our nation back? Go ahead. Now, if this city and the walls thereof be made up again, they will not only refuse to give tribute, but also rebel against kings. You see what it's saying? It says, if they build up these walls, they set up and become a kingdom like they were. It says, listen, they're not going to pay tax. They're not going to pay tax. They're not going to pay tribute unto the king. That means the kings is going to lose money if they rise up. That's what they are telling the king. Go ahead. And for as much as the things pertaining to the temple are now in hand, we mm -hmm. think it meet not to neglect such a matter. Go ahead. But to speak unto our Lord the King, to the intent that, if it be thy pleasure, it may be sought out in the books of thy fathers. You see what he's saying? He says, look at their records. Because uh, the heathens always had our records. They, till today, the Vatican City, they have our records in the Vatican City. You understand? So he says, go into their records and see how rebellious they are. You see that? Read. Right. And thou shalt find in the chronicles what is written mm. concerning these things. You see that thing? 
The Chronicles is, we just read the Chronicles. We just read 2 Chronicles 36, how rebellious after Josiah died. You see those rebellious king that came out, that came afterward? He's making reference to those kings. Read. And thou shalt find in the Chronicles what is written concerning these things, and Go shalt ahead. understand that that city was and shall and first Ezra chapter 2, verse 22. And thou shalt find in the Chronicles what is written concerning these things, mm -hmm. and shalt understand that that city was rebellious, troubling both kings and cities. Read. Really? And that the Jews were rebellious and raised always wars therein. Read. For the which cause even the city was made desolate. By the Babylonians. Come on. Wherefore now we do declare unto thee, O Lord the King, that if this city be built again and the walls thereof set up anew, Come on. thou shalt from henceforth have no passage into Syria and Phoenice. Because we're going to own those lands. Read on. Then the king wrote back again to Rasmus, the story writer, to Beltesmus, to Samelius, the scribe, and to the rest that were in commission and dwellers in Samaria and Syria and Phoenice after this manner. Remember, these are those people that were put in that land by who? Esahadon, you understand? Shalmaneser, Sennacherib, and so forth. Read. I have read the epistle which ye have sent unto me. Therefore, I commanded to make diligent search, and it has been found that that city was from the beginning practicing against kings. Mm. Come on. And the men therein were given to rebellion and war. Mm. And that mighty kings and fierce were in Jerusalem, who reigned and exacted tributes in Silosiria and Phoenice. You see what he's saying? It says, and that mighty kings, mighty kings and fears were in Jerusalem who reigned and exacted tributes in Seleucia and Phoenice. Hold this, give me Ezra 4, verse 7. Ezra, chapter 4, verse 7. Ezra, chapter 4, verse 7. Go ahead. And in the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bishlam, Mithridas, Tabiel, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the mm. writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. You notice that in this book right here, in Ezra, in Ezra 4, they are not specifying the language it was written in. But in, 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 in Ezra 4, is, is mentioning the language it was written in. But in First Ezra, it's not mentioning that. So there's some details. Go ahead. Pray whom? Chancellor and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king in the sort. Read. Then wrote Rehum, the chancellor, and Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the Dinates, the Aphazetikites, Aphazakites, so Dinaites, and uh, the Aphazakites, Okay, the Tapelites and the Aphasites, the Archivites, Babylonians and Shushanakites, and the, De, um, the, Hava, the Dahavites and the Elamites. So these are all non-Israelites. You understand? They are coming against us because we are building the temple. Okay, watch this. Uh, let me... Ezra chapter 4 of sin. Go ahead. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapa brought over and set in the cities of Samaria, and the rest that are on this side the river, and such a time. Come on. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king, thy servants, the men on this side the river, and at such a time. Because there were other, there were, there were, remember, we, we were, we had other people on the other side of the river, right? And those people on the other side of the river, the kings during the time of Solomon and David, we exacted tax on them during the time of Josiah. We did that. So now when Nebuchadnezzar took over, we no longer were able to do that. So now as we are rebuilding under the Persian Empire, there are the, these nations that, that, that know, that have our records, 
they are saying, no, 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 don't let these people rebuild because they are going to put tax on us. They're going to impose tax on us. We don't want that. Read. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which come up, which came up from thee to us, are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof, and joined the foundations. Read. Be it, known unto, be it known now unto the king that if the city be builded and the walls set up again, mm -hmm. then will they not be then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom. You see what he so, says? He says, We're not gonna pay toll, tribute, and customs if we rebuild. Go ahead. And so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. Mm -hmm. Read. Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor. Come on. Therefore, have we sent and certified the king. Read. That search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers. So shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces. Mm. And that they have moved sedition within the same of all time. For which cause was this city destroyed? You see what he's saying? So they are using the time when the rebellious kings, you know, the, the rebellious kings of Judah rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. So they are using that history against us. Go ahead. We certify the king that if the city be built again and the walls thereof set up, by this means... Thou shalt have no portion on this side of the river. Meaning you're no longer going to have access to this side of the river because you're no longer going to be able to collect tax. Read. Then said the king and answer unto Rehum, the chancellor, and to Shimshai, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwelt in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace and at such a time. Read. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me. Mm -hmm. And I commanded the search hath been made. And it is found that this city of old, of old time, hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. Read. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river. And toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. So it's talking about the kings of Judah, where tolls, tribute, and customs was paid unto them. We were paid toll, tribute, and customs, you understand, when we were ruling in our kingdom. Okay, come on. Give ye now commandments to cause these men to seize, mm -hmm. and that this city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Read. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? Why should we put ourselves in a disadvantage by allowing these Negroes to build? Read. Now when the copy of the king Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehu and Shimshai the scribe, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to seize by force and power. You see that thing? They made us to stop building by force and power. What does that mean? Hold this. Go back to First Esdras now. First Esdras chapter 2. First Esdras chapter 2 and verse 28. Watch this. It says, they made us to seize with force and power. Watch this. First Ezra chapter 2, verse 28. Come on. The heathen shall envy thee. Mm -hmm. No, no. They what verse shall you read? Be able to do nothing no, no. against First, first Ezra 2. First Ezra 2, verse 28. Come first on. Ezra first chapter 2, verse 28. Read. Now, therefore, I have commanded to. Now, therefore, I have commanded to hinder those men from building the city mm -hmm. and take heed to be taken 
and he to be taken, that there be no more done in it. Meaning what? No more build, meaning we may no longer build our temple. Go ahead. And that those wicked workers proceed no further to the annoyance of kings. You see what happens to their spirits when we build? It says we annoy them. It says what? That, that those wicked workers proceed no further to the annoyance of kings. Mm. Go ahead. Come on. Then King Artaxerxes, his letter being read, Rathumus and Semelius the scribe, and the rest that were in commission with them, removing in haste toward Jerusalem with a troop of horsemen and a multitude mm -hmm. of people in battle array. You see that thing? Began a multitude, hold on. A multitude of people in battle array. Remember what we read in Ezra 4, verse 23. It says what? It says, and their companions, that they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to seize by force and power. So what did they send against us? They sent... Um, a multitude, what it says, they were well, removing in haste to, towards Jerusalem with a troop of horsemen and a multitude of people in battle array, force and power. Read. Began removing to in haste mm -hmm. began to hinder the builders, mm -hmm. and the building of the temple in Jerusalem ceased until the second year of the reign of Darius. King of the Persians. You see that thing? So it's letting you know that every single time when we wanted to build, you always had that wicked negra. You understand? Of the other nations, by the way, that always wanted to hinder, uh, hinder us from building. Guess what? Even we have wicked negroes that don't want us to build. Now watch this. Hmm. Atta Zix is the first, right? Watch this. Give me the book of Ezra. Mm -hmm. Give me Ezra 7 verse 1. Ezra, chapter 7. Well, I'm almost done. I told you this class was going to be long. That's why I put a disclaimer out. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. You understand? Ezra 7, verse 1. Read that. Ezra, chapter 7, verse 1. Go ahead. Now, after these things, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, uh -huh. Ezra, the son of Sariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, now, you see, now Ezra enters into, enters the scene now, Ezra. It says, in the reign of Artaxerxes. Remember what we read in Ezra chapter 4, verse 7. It says, in the days of Artaxerxes, guess what? Those, those wicked people in our land, in the land of Samaria, they sent letters to the king of Artaxerxes to stop us from building, right? Now, this is now, Ezra enters the scene. But it's still during the time of Artaxerxes the first. So we need to understand the time gap. Okay. Watch this. Jump down to verse 6. Ezra 7, verse 6. Read that. Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. Read. This Ezra went up from Babylon, mm -hmm. and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses. Come on. Which the Lord God of Israel had given. And with and the king granted him all his request, mm -hmm. according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. So now Ezra he come from Babylon. You understand? Remember what we read in Jeremiah twenty nine fifteen. It says the Lord has raised up he raised us up prophets in Babylon. Ezra was one of them as well. Zechariah was one of them. Haggai was one of them. Ezra is one of those prophets that was raised up in Babylon under who under the Persian Empire. Okay. Um, come on, keep reading. Verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And they went up some of the children of Israel, and of the priests, and the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nethanims unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. You see, you see when Ezra came into the land, when he left Babylon, it was in the seventh year of the reign of Artaxerxes. So this is years later. You understand? This is on the seventh, in the seventh year now. Okay, come on. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, and which was in the seventh year of the king. Which was in the seventh year of the king Artaxerxes. Jump down to verse 10. 
verse 10. Mm. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. You see right then? So Ezra's job was to teach, was to restore the honor of the law unto the people and to teach the people the laws of God so they can what? Know how to do sacrifices and so forth. Okay, watch this. Give me first Ezra's 8 and 1. First Ezra chapter 8 verse 1. First Ezra chapter 8 verse 1. Go ahead. And after these things, when Artaxerxes the king of the Persians reigned, came Ezra the son of Sarias, the son of Ezarias, the son of Halkiah, the son of Salum. Jump down to verse 3. Verse 3. This mm. Ezra went up from Babylon as a scribe, being very ready in the law of Moses. Mm. It was given by the God of Israel. You see, Ezra, listen, when you read the book of Ezra and first and second Ezra, Ezra, listen, oh, he was sharp. You see what he says? This Ezra went up from Babylon as a scribe, being very ready in the law of Moses. Not just any, re very ready. Okay, watch this. Jump down to verse six. Verse six. Mm -hmm. In the seventh year of the reign of Artaxerxes, in the fifth month, Come on. This was the king's seventh year. Mm -hmm. For they went from Babylon in the first day of the month and came to Jerusalem according to the prosperous journey. Which... Come on, you are breaking up. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. For Ezra had very great skill mm. so that he omitted nothing of the law and commandments of the Lord. Mm. But taught Israel the ordinances and judgments. You see, Ezra mm, as a heavy forefather right there. He was glorious. Okay, watch this. Give me Ezra 7, verse 11. Ezra chapter 7, verse 11. There's details. You read first Ezra, there's details that are put in there. And when you go to Ezra, you're not gonna find those details. You understand? That's why here in Ezra 7, it says he prepared his heart. You understand? To seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. In first Ezra, it says, Ezra was a very, he says what? He had very great skill so that he omitted nothing of the law and commandments of the Lord, but taught all Israel the ordinances and judgments. Okay. Ezra chapter seven, verse 11. Ezra chapter seven, verse 11. Go ahead. Now, this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, Read. even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord. Come on. And of his statutes to Israel. Mm -hmm. Read. Artaxerxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of God of heaven, mm -hmm. of the law of the God of heaven, perfect peace in such a time. So what is happening here is that Ezra is going to Jerusalem to teach. So but he's getting permission from King Artaxerxes for him to go up there to teach the people. And Artaxerxes is going to allow him to take brothers with him to go up there so that he can teach the people the law while the people are building the temple. You understand? Read. Come on. Verse 13. I make uh -huh. a decree that all they of the people of Israel and of his priests and Levites in my realm, which are minded of their own free will to go mm. up to Jerusalem, go with thee. So now he's saying, listen, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make a decree that the people must go with you and they must make sure they help you in the work. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And I... Even I, at Xerxes the king, to make a decree to all churches which are beyond the river, that whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the require of you, it be done speedily. So, you are breaking up. Yo, you are breaking up. You are breaking up so bad. Do you remember when we were reading the, uh, the, the Wikipedia pages about the kings of Persia? They keep saying the king of kings of the Achaemenid Empire. Jump up to verse 12. Ezra 7 verse 12. Watch this. 
Ezra chapter 7 verse 12. Go ahead. Artaxerxes, king of kings. Stop right there. Ezra the priest. It says Artaxerxes, king of kings. That's why in Wikipedia, it kept saying that. King of kings, king of kings. Uh -huh. Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of First Ezra, chapter 8, verse 8. First Ezra, chapter 8, verse 8. First Ezra, chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now the copy of the commission, which was written from Artaxerxes the king, mm -hmm. and came to Ezra the priest, and reader of the law of the Lord, mm -hmm. is this that follows. So now, this is the copy of the letter that was given to Ezra by Artaxerxes the first. Go ahead. King Artaxerxes unto Ezra the priest and reader of the law of the Lord sendeth greeting. Come on. Having determined to deal graciously, I have given order that such of the nation of the Jews and of the priests and Levites being, with our, being within our realm as are willing and desirous should go with thee unto Jerusalem. Come on. As many, therefore, as have a mind, as have a mind thereunto, let them depart with thee, as it hath seemed good both to me and my seven friends, the counselors. Read. That they may look unto the affairs of Judea and Jerusalem, agreeably to that which is in the law of the Lord. So he's saying, listen, the people that I'm, I'm, I'm commissioning that to go with you, which are of your people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a decree that they must help you in the work. You understand? Even if they don't, he says they're going to be put to death or their goods will be taken from them and they are going to be kicked out of their houses. You can read that history on your own. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Let all things be performed after the law of God diligently unto the Most High God that wrath come not upon the kingdom of the king and his sons. So now he's saying, listen, let all these things, let all the, the, the let all things be performed after the law of God diligently unto the most high God. Meaning what? What Ezra needed to go to Jerusalem to do is says, let all those things be performed so that me, I don't get judged. I don't want my kingdom to be judged and I don't want my sons to be judged for that. So he, he says, I'm allowing to go out there and build. You understand? So this is during the time of Nehemiah. His job was to make sure that, I mean, during the time of Ezra, his job was to make sure that to teach the people the law because he says he had very great skill in the law. This was during the time of Artaxerxes the first in the seventh year of his reign. Okay. Now, give me Nehemiah one and one. Nehemiah chapter one verse one. Go ahead. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the mouth of Kislu in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan the palace. So now, remember, this is, it says in the 20th year. This is about plus minus 13 years after Ezra. Nehemiah comes 13 years after Ezra. Okay, give me Nehemiah 2 verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king. In the what year? In the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king. In the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king. Go ahead. That wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Remember, Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king. So he always had to what? He had to have the spirit of hospitality always before King Arazexis. You understand? So at this point, Nehemiah has a sad countenance because why? Because jump up to chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 2. Read. That Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, mm -hmm. which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Read. 
And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity, they in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned at fire. You see that thing? So now they are telling him of what's going on in Jerusalem. What's happening? He's telling, listen, uh, the gates are burned with fire, the walls. They are left desolate. So he has to go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and fix the gates of the city. That's why he was sad. And the king, it was the first time the king seeing him sad like that. You understand? But what I'm showing you, the timeline of Artaxerxes, Nehemiah, he also walked during that time of Artaxerxes, but 13 years after Ezra. You understand? But there's a point where Ezra and Nehemiah will meet and they work together in Nehemiah chapter 8. You understand? So, hmm, let me see. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down a little bit. I think I'm going to continue part two. But part two is not going to be that long. I don't have a lot left. So, um, go back to Ezra chapter six. Okay, Ezra six, verse 14 again. You know what? Daniel 11. Daniel chapter 11 and verse two again. Daniel chapter 11, verse two. Read. And now will I show thee the truth. Mm -hmm. Behold, they shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. Come on. And the fourth shall be far richer than they all. Mm -hmm. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. So now we went over the three kings. We went over Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes. Okay. So now... Um, Go to Ezra 6, 6, verse 14 again. So we know the names of those three kings. The fourth one is Darius the, the third, which I'm not going to deal with tonight, okay? Read that, Ezra 6, 14. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. Come on. And the elders of the Jews building, mm -hmm. and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet, Read. and Zechariah the son of Edo. Mm -hmm. And they builded and finished it. According to the commandment of the God of Israel, Great. and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Now, give me Isaiah 45, verse 13 now. Well, I'm backtracking a little bit. Okay, come on. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. Come on. I have raised, up, I have raised him up in righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I will direct all his ways. And he shall build my city. And Wait. he shall let go my captives. Mm -hmm. Not for price, nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? So Cyrus will do that. And then the kings also after him, they will do the same thing that he did to help us to rebuild our desolate places. Okay. Cyrus. Okay. Uh, that was Cyrus. You had Darius, Artaxerxes. Xerxes as well, because Xerxes also allowed us to what? To keep the Feast of Purim in captivity in Persia during the time of our foremother Esther. You understand? So now I'm going to end the class right there. Okay. I'm going to end the class right here is to be continued. Okay. Watch this. Uh, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep.
In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.